Everybody get a cup of coffee. Everybody, everybody get a cup of coffee. Are you serious? What? Yes, this is the coming apocalypse and chaos everywhere. I mean, and it's it, it, Mike said we'd be talking about wars, weather, and water. He said that last Thursday. Well, guess what? We will be talking about wars, weather, and water because they are all converging on the moment. Tonight, on Thursday Night Live, I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Get ready tonight. Let me just say real quick, put a fast shout right now for www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. Hey, wait a minute. Investing feels overwhelming right now, doesn't it? So complicated. So many decisions. But leaving your money in the bank, it's not making, you know, it's 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 not good. I mean, because you need a better protection. It's losing its value, is what I'm saying. Every single day. So if it's just if it's stressing you out and driving you nuts, why not invest smarter? with Noble Gold Investments at www.pastorpaulgold.com. Now, precious metals are simple and real, and gold is a biblical currency. There isn't a company on the stock market that was around 2,000 years, but gold was. It's always been there through wars, disasters, turmoil, chaos. It's been reliable, it's dependable, and it's authentic. And that's why you can't go wrong with precious metals at www.pastorpaulgold.com. Call them, call them on the phone. Talk it over where you're at in your life cycle, where your retirement funds are. What about that 401k? How can you diversify? Call them at 877-646-5347. You'll get dedicated professionals to assign to you. There'll be no hassles, no call centers. Tell them Pastor Paul sent you. They really want to know that. And they're giving for everyone that sets up a gold or silver IRA or rolls over their 401k. They're giving you one quarter of an ounce gold coin. This is a gold standard coin. They will give you this coin, which is worth over $700 for free. Just go to www.pastorpaulgold.com and tell them Pastor Paul sent you there. All right, now. Guys, we got a lot to talk about. That's why I'm starting this broadcast early, uh, because we have to do it now. Start with the tornadoes. It's hitting right now. There's 13 active severe weather warnings in throughout the nation. They're in Illinois, Missouri, Mississippi, and Texas. And right now, we're very concerned about Illinois. And that whole storm system of tornadic activity is sliding into Indiana. Uh, right now, here's what we have. There is a severe thunderstorm taking place right now uh, in Missouri. Okay. Also, and that and that started at, at uh, you know 8:43 here central. Uh, there's a tornado uh, on the ground in Effingham and Jasper counties in Illinois, and it just happened. It just got there. About 10 minutes ago. Also, there's severe thunderstorms in DeWitt, Macon, and Platte County in Illinois with winds blowing over 50 miles an hour straight line winds and tornadic possibilities. There's also severe thunderstorms located along a line of extended from near central uh, Cent- Centuria to near Williamsville in uh, there in Franklin, Hamilton, Jackson, Jefferson, Perry, and Wayne counties in Illinois. A tornado on the ground in Logan and and Macon counties in Illinois. Also, more massive severe thunderstorms in Clay, Effingham, and Shelby County, Illinois. And in Iron, Madison, and Reynolds County in Missouri, severe thunderstorms and a tornado on the ground. In Clinton and Marion and Washington County, tornado on the ground. And so we're very concerned about that one. So there's three tornadoes on the ground, all in Illinois right now. There's been tornadic activity in Missouri. There's been large hail in Missouri. There is concern 
Very high concern for Mississippi and Texas later this evening. And, of course, this entire huge storm is flowing into Indiana. So our prayers are going for everybody, and I mean everybody, that's out there right now. Uh, we are truly living in uh, very prophetic times. We really, really are. Heidi wanted, to, uh, wanted me to announce real quickly that our next webinar is May 31st. It will be Friday night, May 31st, called Pole Shift. Yeah, it's time to talk about it. Pole Shift. There is meteorologist. There is uh, climatologist. Uh, there is uh, NASA. There's a lot of people now ready to talk about the inevitable, a pole shift. And Mike, around the world, plus we're going to get some of the best experts we can get on this. We'll give you the names of the speakers as they come a bit available, but you can get your ticket tonight at Eventbrite, okay? It's available at Eventbrite. It's not on our website yet, but it is at Eventbrite. You can go there and get your ticket for pole shift, and that's May, it's going to be May 31st coming up. Uh, and so I think it's very important. Also, guys, you guys know the Passover is coming Monday. This could be the most, the third most important Passover in the history of since uh, of time. And I'm saying to you, God, the first most important, um, the first very most important was of course, the Passover that everybody got to exit out of Egypt. No doubt about that. The second most was when Jesus was crucified on the cross on the Passover. And this could be the third. And that could be they may sacrifice the burning of the ashes of the red heifer. And they may do it Monday, Passover. Uh, send in your offerings. People are already sending them in. They have been all week. The Passover starts on Monday, the 22nd. Uh, we're going to pray special prayer over all of the offerings and prayer requests that have come in already. Tonight, we're going to pray again on Sunday night. Uh, we'll pray again uh, during the week, next week, during the Passover. And so you've got time. Get your offerings in and uh, send your prayer requests with them. We'll take all those prayer requests with us to Israel the next time we go. Don't know when that'll be. Because the, there are wars and rumors of wars. Matter of fact, let's talk about that right now. Pray for everybody, though, in these uh, tornadic activity taking place. And here's what else is happening. Oh, we're going to talk about water events. We're going to talk about wars, water, weather, chaos everywhere. First of all, let's start with Iran. They have threatened to target Israel's nuclear facilities today. And the Middle East is on the precipice of a bigger war. I just watched a few minutes ago live the Iranian foreign minister. He was being interviewed on CNN live with Aaron uh, Burnett. And uh, all he wanted to talk about was war, war, war. Well, no, no, there was no discussion about peace. It's just like he's he was itching for Israel to respond. It's as if they know what they're going to do. And matter of fact, the Middle East is on the precipice of a broader war that can be averted. Listen to this. <laughs> a broader war could be all peace could come if there was just a two state solution allowing Israel and the Palestinians to exist side by side and hold hands and sing kumbaya with Jerusalem split in half also in a shared capital. That's what the United Nations Secu Secretary General Antonio Guterres told the Security Council today. In other words, and without this, there will never be peace. He's not the only one preaching that, though. So is Iran preaching it. So is the Palestinians preaching it. So is Joe Biden preaching it. So is a lot of people preaching that. And Israel. However, the solution, two-state solution, won't come from an immediate U.S. recognition of a Palestinian state. After the U.S. vetoed today in the Security Council a draft resolution to make 
Palestine estate. They want to forcibly part the land. Guys, you'll be stunned by this vote. It, the vote was 12 said yes, force the two-state solution, and two abstained. That was the United Kingdom and Switzerland, and only the United States vetoed and said no and have and used their veto power, which held it back. Guys, Israel doesn't have any very, very, very few friends left, and they can't count on them with the current administration right now. Gutierrez's comments came as Iran warned it had the ability to strike Israeli nuclear sites if Israel targets Iran's nuclear facilities. And Gutierrez said a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian crisis is the basis of the United Nations resolutions, international law, and previous agreements. The current Israeli government, however, has shown very little interest in relinquishing control of their territories or of their nation or their land. One miscalculation, he said, one miscommunication, one mistake could lead to the unthinkable, a full-scale regional conflict that would be devastating for all involved and for the rest of the world. Gutierrez called on Israel as the, quote, occupying power, I hate that, to protect the Palestinian population in the West Bank against violence and intimidation and to allow safe passage for humanitarian aid into Gaza. Let me be clear, said the Secretary General. The risks are spiraling on many fronts, he said. We have a shared responsibility to address those risks and to pull the region back from the precipice. Um, but then the U.S. says Palestinian statehood from come from a deal with Israel, not a U.N. vote. So what the U.S. said is, look, we want a two-state solution. That's what Biden's been saying. Biden, Joe Biden says, uh, Donald Trump says never. Trump was the one that declared the city of Jerusalem the eternal city of God and moved the U.S. embassy there on the 70th anniversary of Israel being a nation. You can't and declared the Golan Heights sovereign property of Israel. You can't be any stronger for Israel than Trump. Biden, on the other hand, wants a two-state solution. The U.S. vetoed, though, the draft resolution today that could have made Palestine a state in the U.N. That does not mean Biden administration, though, opposes a two-state solution, and a statehood nation for Palestine, but rather that this is not the way to attain it, he said. Not by force. It needs to be an agreement between Israel and the world. The United States continues to strongly support a two-state solution, said U.S. Deputy Ambassador to the U.N., Robert Wood. He told the Security Council that. This vote does not reflect opposition to Palestinian statehood, but instead it's an acknowledgement that it will only come from direct negotiations between the Palestinians and the nation of Israel. The administration has been pushing for reformed Palestinian authority to take over the governing Gaza after the war and for Israel to agree to a path for future Palestinian statehood, which the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fiercely opposes. Because he's thinking, well, why would we give them half our nation and let them become a state, a nation, give half our country away to people who just came over the border on October 7th and butchered our people? Why would we do that? Nothing less, the Palestinian Authority President Maoud Abbas was livid over the American vote the only one cast in the Security Council against the measure recommending the United Nations General Assembly that the state of Palestine be established. The United States vetoed no. Britain and Switzerland abstained. And uh, the other 12 nations voted yes. And that includes France, China, and Russia. Those guys voted yes. Now, Abbas 
called the U.S. decision unfair, unethical, unjustified, saying in a statement that it challenges the will of the international community, which strongly supports Palestine's full membership. Iran said it could strike Israeli nuclear sites. Iran said we could alter the peaceful and change things to a nuclear doctrine. And if Israel targets Iranian nuclear sites, we will surely and categorically reciprocate with advanced advanced missiles against their own nuclear sites, said the senior commander in Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps today. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responded, said, we will respond accordingly. So we don't know what's going to happen. The The attack by Iran on Israel was last Saturday night. I, I really thought Israel would have responded before now. It might happen tonight. Maybe that's why the Iranian foreign minister was on MSNBC this morning and was again doing a live interview on CNN primetime tonight. It may be that we're on the brink of Israel's retaliation and it's about to happen. We don't know. Mike from the world is going to join us tonight. Uh, in just a few minutes here, we've got another information for you. Very important. The UN climate chief, this just came in, presses for faster action. He says humans only have two years left to save the world. What? Now, this is the United Nations climate chief. What's he smoking? What's he token? Is this dude joking? What? Um, the United Nations climate chief says humanity only has two years left. That's worse than Al Gore and AOC's prediction. This guy's lost his mind. He went off his rocker. His good dudes went insane. Are you serious? He said only two years left to save the world. Jesus Christ is the only one that can save the world. Believe me. But in Oxford, England today, humanity has only two years left, he said, to save the world by making dramatic changes in the way it spews its heat-trapping emissions, and it has even less time to act and to get the finances behind such a massive shift to the head of the United Nations Climate Agency. With governments of the world facing a 2025 deadline for new and stronger plans to curb carbon pollution, Nearly half of the world's populations voted in their elections this year and crucial global finance meetings later this month in Washington. In the United Nations, Executive Climate Secretary Simon Steele said yesterday he knows his warning may sound melodramatic. You think? You talk about fear-mongering. Are you serious? Don't be blaming me because I say chaos is everywhere because chaos is everywhere. But I would never, ever, never, ever, ever declare to you that we only have two years left to save the world. First of all, we can't save the world. Only Christ can. Someone's saying there's explosions in Iran. Robert, please keep an eye on that. Okay, I need I need clarification. Uh, keep an eye on that. It doesn't shock me. I actually, I've been thinking it all day that this thing's going to happen tonight. And when I saw the Iranian foreign minister on, on Morning Joe this morning and then saw him again on national television on CNN for an hour tonight, I said to myself, something's about to happen. So anyway, let's keep an eye on what's going on here. Meanwhile... He said, we still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions tumble with a new generation of national climate plans. But we need these stronger plans now, said Steele in a speech at the Chatham House think tank in London, England. He suggested that the climate action is not just for powerful people to address in a not so veiled reference to the electoral calendar this year. Who exactly has two years to save the world? The answer is every person on the planet. More and more people want climate action right now. We have to do something. We only have two years left, he said, to save the world. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know how you can give any legitimacy 
Does he really believe that the human race is what's causing the world, causing unbearable CO2 emissions of carbon? Oh, I, I just try not to have a migraine on that one. Uh, oh, and by the way, speaking of uh, concerns, what in the world's going on with 911? I'm not talking about the book, Revelation 911. I'm talking about the U.S. 911 emergency call line outage. Again? Guys, South Dakota, Nebraska, Nevada, and Texas, the 911 telephone call lines went down in four states, creating chaos everywhere in those counties in which it went down. Now, guys, it was just about uh, two weeks ago that 115 different offices throughout several states in America, the 911 centers went down. Now, um, okay, someone's saying we have confirmation. It, it's confirmed breaking the Jerusalem Post reports explosions in F. If Has in Iran, as well as southern Syria and Baghdad, Iraq. Okay, so let's just triple check this. Thank you guys for keeping an eye. I've been I've been watching all day, and I was just I was telling Heidi. I said I think it's going to happen. Watch, it could very well happen tonight. Okay, but why would these nine eleven? I'm looking right now. Why would these nine uh, eleven? Emergency centers. Who's hacking these? Russia? No. I mean, who is hacking these? China? Um, chaos everywhere, guys. Um, da, 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 da. um Hang on one second. Let me get a song. Give me a song. And uh, I will be right back in just a moment. Let me check this. Let's do a quick song. We also got Chance Gibson going to be with us tonight. We got Mike from the world going to be with us tonight. We really have a power pack. That's why I started early. I just had a feeling. I can't stop this feeling. And deep inside of me, I feel like there's going to be. Are you serious? Wait a minute. Are, are you serious? I'll be right back. Saturday was silent, and surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible it's happening. ever stopped you? Yep. This is the sound of a dry bones rattling. This is the brains make a dead man walk again. All right, we have Open confirmation. I'm coming out. I'm gonna We're going to be bringing Chad Gibson in in just a minute. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. And it caught so fire. Stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Your resurrection power it runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a Dead 
Okay, we do have confirmation here. Heidi just walked in. Explosions have just now been heard in Iran, in Syria, and in Iraq. This is according to the Jerusalem Post. Uh, this is according to the Jerusalem Post. Explosions have been heard in Isfahan, central Iran, um, also southern Syria, and in Baghdad area early Friday morning. And it is. It's already Friday morning over there. It's about 3. I would let's see. It's 9. It's around 3 o'clock in the morning there. Okay. Uh, this story is developing. Uh, and that's what we have at this exact moment. Now, the Jerusalem Post is all over it. So this you're hearing this right now, guys. And I told Heidi, I said, because the Iranian foreign minister was on national, he was on Morning Joe on MSNBC this morning. And then tonight he was interviewed for an hour on CNN. And he was talking war, war, war. There was no peace, no accountability. It was just war. And his answer was, if Israel hits us, hits our nu nuclear facilities, we will hit theirs. And there was... Um, uh, there was just war talk. So I, I said to Heidi, I said, I will not be shocked if we, if they don't have, if it doesn't happen tonight, if Israel doesn't make their move, make their response. Now, question is, what did they do? What facilities did Israel hit? Um, I mean, when you say Iran and in Syria and Iraq, this is pretty comprehensive. The United States have already said that they would not help Israel plan this attack or be a part of this attack. I don't know if they did or didn't. Mike's going to join us a little while. We'll get more info as the evening goes on. But I think what we'll do right now is uh, we were saying we're talking about chaos everywhere. Well, it's happening also in the weather. We've got tornadoes. We've got three different locations. Tornadoes are on the ground in Illinois tonight. As we just said, there is a tornado uh, and massive, uh, severe thunderstorms, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, Texas. There was some earlier in Mississippi. And this is going to be a long night here in America. Straight line winds, large hail, um, tornadoes. And this is going to be a very long night here in America as it relates to the weather chaos. And so we're talking uh, about also water chaos you guys may not know this but in uae in dubai it rained 5.5 inches of rain in dubai in 12 hours and they only get three inches of rain a year so they have no runoff system no way to prepare for such a thing that's it just flooded everywhere also we had massive rains in pakistan kayakistan afghanistan and southern russia Mudslides, scores, I mean, dozens and dozens of people killed in every one of those countries, and chaos in the land. And we've not even seen one hurricane. We haven't even got started yet with the typhoons and the monsoons uh, and, and the cyclones and the hurricanes. So chaos everywhere. We need somebody to give us some advice, somebody that can help us prepare for the times we're in. So why not go right now? And uh, check the settings real fast. Let's make sure we got these set right so we ha don't have any echoes and any of that kind of stuff going on. Go. And let's bring them in right now. Folks, coming right now to join us. Are you serious? It's Chance. Chance Gibson. SimplyCleanFoods.com. Uh, .net. Excuse me. Chance, how are we doing? Blessings, Pastor. It is so wonderful to be on the show again. And .com or .net, either one will work. All right, Pastor. Oh, good. Either one will work. Listen, Pastor. Um, I, I would like to lead us into uh, prayer, but before I do, a special, a special message for Mike from around the world. Mike, uh, my wife and I were tuning in a while back, uh, months ago, and you said something very nice about uh, our company and i i thank you for that that was very very nice of you to do that yes, he did. we appreciate yes, he it did. mike from council of time so if i can pastor just uh, lead us into prayer please Short do it. prayer please do it please bow your heads holy spirit help us against the avalanche of ungodliness in our country through all forms of propaganda 
accusations, and multiple lying voices of condemnation via the media and the talking heads. May our attention be returned to you in the majesty of the power and the glory of the God we serve. When we say to you, yes, today, we serve you. We say yes to your will and yes to your way and yes to your divine invitations and inspirations. For there are no mistakes in your kingdom where the spirit of the fear of God and the spirit of repentance comes to us as never before. The name of Jesus be with you and your kingdom extended in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, <laughs> Chance, thank you for that. Boy, Chance, okay. The chaos of the weather. The season is just starting. We have to prepare. And we got to prepare for a lot of things. But can you help us? When, let's say it floods. Because flooding is seemingly going to be a major problem. We're hearing Mike even talk about the water event that we're going to see. There's been coastal flooding. There's been flooding in different parts. Give us some help on this from simplycleanfoods.net. Absolutely. And, you know, um, our friend Mike called this. He called this a long time ago. He said there will be a lot of rain in many places and to prepare for these things. And so he's right on. And I, I, can, I can only tell you that. Here in Texas, we've experienced rain that we've never seen before. The the uh, almanac, uh, we're setting records here, right? And so we, we do have to be careful. So what I'm going to do is I have prepared a list of things for you folks to do in case of flooding. Please pay attention. You might want to write these things down. Go back and listen to this show again with a pen and paper maybe and put this up on the refrigerator. It's super, super important, okay? So let's start with number one. Make sure, and we're talking about an imminent flood coming your way, make sure all of your doors and openings to your house are covered and or sealed by plastic or sandbags, right? You can get sand in many places, right? So fill up those sandbags, have those ready to go. Number two, a lot of people don't think about this, Pastor. Make sure all of your sinks, your tubs, your toilets are completely plugged. This will prevent the backflow of septic and sewer systems. You don't want to have to deal with that. Number three, make sure that you stow your valuable items, anything that you truly care about or can get damaged in a flood on, on upper shelves and cabinets, right? In your kitchen, possibly in your living room including super important guys your documents you can store documents very inexpensively uh due to an imminent flood in like a freezer bag for example you can seal that up nice and tight it makes those documents waterproof uh, this also includes any identification and during a flood your insurance documents you want to make sure that you have those after an event like that uh, number four turn off your electricity go to that panel box and turn off all of your breakers if you have natural gas make sure that you turn off your natural gas prior to that event guys you don't want these issues of being electrocuted and or having a gas leak in your home uh, number five here's something other people don't think about secure any items on your property what we're talking about is the outside of your property now right so things like your children's toys things like boats so you'd be surprised a boat on a trailer if it is submerged in water will float right so you don't want that boat coming through your home or your neighbor's home so anything that can damage your home make sure that you secure that grills etc that's a big one um number five Number six, have prepared food ready to eat. Guys, your electric stove is not going to work during a major flood. So what should you do for yourself and your family? Go ahead and cook those meals in advance. Go ahead and package those meals ready to go. Because during an event like this, and we're going to get into that in a minute, 
you're going to need to have that food ready to go. You're not going to have time to deal with trying to prepare something at the last minute, okay? Uh, this includes having enough water as well on hand. Folks, remember, we've talked about this before. Water is not just for drinking, right? Water may be for cleaning your surfaces. Water may be for flushing a toilet. Make sure that you have enough water on hand. And I would suggest... Most events like this that we've experienced and disasters that we're involved with last about 72 hours, major, mm. major flooding, about 72 hours before things come back online. So I would say 25 gallons of water per person in the home. Sounds really? like a lot. Sounds yeah. like a lot, but it's not. When you consider you need water for cooking as well. You need water, uh, potable water. You need water for flushing. And to maybe wipe yourself down, right? So you're going to need some water to clean the kids up as well, okay? Um, number seven. I'm going to grab this for you, Pastor. Okay. Number seven. Please, folks, have a radio oh, like yeah. this. Okay, now what okay. kind of radio is that? Wait, wait, wait. So this is a very special radio. It's got solar. Yeah, turn this dry. It's got okay. solar. It's got crank. There we go. It's got crank, so we can crank this. No batteries required. And look at this. It's got, we just talked about the weather. So it's got a NOAA band where you can listen to the weather. Being that you might not have a TV or your computers, you might not have internet, you can listen to your weather bands. Even shortwave, it has a shortwave receiver. Uh, what's awesome, awesome about this also is it has a built-in uh, flashlight and huh. you can charge your devices with this and a built-in compass, okay? Give me a call if you guys need to know where to get this. I can yes. definitely yeah. help you with that. Very, very important. AM, what's FM, that? shortwave, and NOAA receiver. Uh, in a situation where you might not have batteries on hand, this is a lifesaver. What's this the one phone number? By... What, what, what phone number do you got chance for that? Yeah, so you can, guys can give me a call at 737-400-2066, okay. 737-400-2066. Um, guys, you can pick these up. Actually on amazon or ebay for under 40 bucks i mean so to pick up weather and shortwave have a device like this that does so many different things i like that, that. is truly truly amazing okay? i mean think about it you're in a situation where there's massive flooding there's no power you have no way to communicate with you know your phone's going goes dead after the battery dies you might be able to charge your phone off this thing i don't know you can you can through okay. a usb port with a full charge on this, it operates on crank solar and batteries, all right? So you can charge your phone, you can charge your devices right from the, the radio, absolutely. So that's very, very important. I mean, that's really important. And it's got a flashlight also. So it's a very important, I think. I think that it's a great deal. And uh, so you can get, get a hold of Chance there if you want to get one of those, that's for sure, as well as all the other items that he has, including the foods. And you, you mentioned about cooking foods or getting foods ready. I take it you mean cook some meals and freeze them. Is that is that kind of what you're saying? Exactly right. So but if you know that uh, you've got a weather event and uh, it looks like you're going to have quite a bit of rainfall in your area, this is just wise to prepare your meals for yourself and your family ahead of time. Maybe you can throw them in the freezer, right? Um even foods for the first 24, 48 hours in your refrigerator are going to be fine. But just make sure that you have those meals. I would say at least nine meals uh, ready to go. Um, this is a biggie. This one's a biggie. Number eight, if mandatory evacuation is required. Now, this is any event, right? But uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, but especially with flooding, if it's required, Please understand, you walk outside that home, there's a lot of danger there, right? So you can't even see in a major flood what's underneath your feet. So you've got to be very cautious as to where you walk. Do you really want to walk outside right into a manhole, for example, 
or any other no. item that if, any other thing that might be uh, obstructive uh, to your path, right? The number one cause for fatalities in a flood is guess what? Getting in your vehicle and driving down the road. Do you realize that your car, even in less than a foot of water, if that water is moving at a high rate of speed, you can be washed right off the road. Folks, I've seen it personally. Wow. You're saying that the current could just take your car while you're driving. Absolutely. I've seen it personally on a highway here near us. Um, we had a lot of rain, and what happened was the rain was coming across the field. It was building up uh, pressure, building up speed, comes across the road. Now there's a little over a foot of water on the road. And these cars are trying to plow through this to get home. Big mistake. Big mistake. Your car will float, right? Depending on the size, a small car especially will float and be pushed right off the road. So this is the number one reason for fatalities. So please know your evacuation routes. Train with these things. Do not try to pass in an area where you have water on the road, standing water on the road turn around go another direction do not put yourself in danger and do not become a victim this is super super important okay um last thing and i can help you guys with this so we, we only have so much time but i can help you with this if you give us a call or shoot us an email at simply clean foods at chef.net this is huge build in advance what we call a flood kit a flood kit so number one Build your flood kit in a backpack. Why is that important? This is why. Your hands are free. Got your backpack on. Now you can grab little Johnny. You can grab little Julie. You can grab your documents. You can grab the things that are important to you. Build that flood kit. Here's just a few things that are in that kit that I want to uh, share with you guys, okay? I actually have one of these uh, in my home and in my car. So maybe two or three. If you have two or three cars, make sure that they're in your car. So um this includes perishable non-perishable food for about a 72 hour period uh food for your pet as well please remember your mm, pets okay? yeah yeah that's right they right. yeah they're not gonna get along well without you so please pack food for your pet a raincoat a poncho a blanket uh, or sleeping bag uh, copies of your important documents again have those with you at all times Portable water filtration. Many um, of your listeners, Paul, yep. um, we have set clean sip straws to. So a life straw, uh, a bottle that can filter water as you drink it, right? This yep. way you're not trying to carry from your home gallons and gallons of water. Water's eight pounds per gallon. Pretty darn heavy, okay? Yep. Um, any medications, guys, this is important. Oh, it's true. Any medications that you're going to need, make sure... You have those packed in advance, okay? Uh, especially diabetes and things like that. Heart medication, uh, pain medication, super, super important that you have these items uh, on hand. Don't forget uh, personal hygiene, first aid kit, and then, of course, a couple of changes of clothes, depending on uh, how much room you have, at least two changes of clothes in your pack at all times. But have a plan. Prepare and train. I can't say that enough. When I was in the military, that's all we did. Train, train, train. So when that event came about, we didn't even have to think about it. We knew exactly what to do. Okay. Um, so if you guys have any other questions on preparing for a flood, I've got more. Uh, and so reach out to me again, 737-400-2066 or email us at simplycleanfoods at chef.net we can do actually a very personal consultation uh, by you letting me know some specifics about where you live in the country i can help you make a plan okay uh pastor you and you and i were at the hear the watchman conference yes we were yes we were and we launched two new products there one i have with me all right one of my favorites we have Wild caught red what? Argentine prawns. Listen, okay. folks, we are the only 
company, freeze dry company in the United States that is doing this. These prawns are wild. They come from Argentina. And guys, the recipe that we have put together is right on the oh, back. Oh, I like that. We cook these in butter and garlic and a little I pepper. Like and let me tell you, they taste, this is a very special prawn. They taste just like lobster. Oh, if come on like now. Lobsters, Chance, you did, are you serious? I know, Pastor. It's not my fault. I know, I know but I'm going to send you guys good. some. I mean, I'm going to send you Okay. I'm going to send you guys some, and people are going gaga. I mean, just nuts over these. Um, this is a very, very top-of-the-line prawn. Um, wow. It cooks. It, they're freeze-dried. They're going to last 10 years in this package. You're going to open up this tear strip right here. You're going to pull out just enough for dinner, and maybe you'll share. Maybe you won't. Maybe you but, won't. Uh, That's right. uh, the first time we were testing these, Pastor, and uh, I cooked some up on the stove. I had something else I needed to do. I came back. I cooked 12 prawns, Pastor. And I came back, and the pen was empty. What? And I said, honey, <laughs> did you just have some prawns? She goes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I said, whoa, honey, <laughs> six were for me, and six were for you. Uh -huh. She said, well, you didn't tell me that, no. so I ate them all. Oh, they're delicious, Pastor. They're so rich in flavor. Uh, if you like lobster, you're going to love these. Call me uh, for this product, okay? It's in such limited supply. We do this right here in-house. So it's in such limited supply. You're going to get 50 of these uh, large prawns in every bag, and it sells for $50. So a buck a piece, pretty darn good. You're not going to be able to go out to town and have lobster for a dollar a piece, right? So give us a call about that. And then the other thing, Pastor, I want to talk to you guys about is we developed soup, a super tea. Now, this tea contains things like lion's mane mushroom powder, mm. Korean ginseng, okay, and beet powder for your heart. That's good stuff. And a lot of our fruit powders for your vitamin C. I know there's not, not everyone out there are tea drinkers. I'm telling you, if you want a tea... That is very fruity. You don't even have to add sugar or okay. any type okay. of sweetener to it. You are going to love this. Uh, we have tea. And, oh, by the way, uh, we, we've been hearing this from our customers. Because it's made, the main ingredient is moringa leaf tea powder. Oh, okay. That's not caffeinated. That's not caffeinated. People are telling me, uh, Charlie from California, uh, as a matter of fact, said, Chance, I haven't slept through the night in 13 years. Through the night in 13 years. I've been drinking this tea a couple cups in the morning and a couple in the evening. I am now sleeping through the night. Pastor, I'm wow. being honest. I don't even know. I don't even. I'm not a chemist, right? Right. But they're right. all natural products. I didn't even know that this was. I do feel better. I have more focus. I have more energy. You know, natural energy, but it doesn't. It doesn't like coffee, right? Gives you a buzz and then brings you down. It actually helps you sleep at night. So, uh, reach out to us. Uh, you can find that actually on our website. It's simplycleanfoods.net or .com. Uh, just type in Super Tea in that search bar. You'll find it there. And, and and Pastor, we have to talk about your product, which is the Are You Serious Pack. Yes, the are come you on, serious Are You Serious Pack? pack? This is important, folks. You got to have this. Show them, Chance. I'm telling you, the Are You Serious Pack is so popular, not just amongst your listeners, brothers and sisters in Christ, but uh, a lot of folks are taking this Are You Serious Pack because it's a 30-day supply of uh -huh. fruits and vegetables. So it's got wonderful things like blueberry. If you like broccoli, cauliflower. Oh, so much amazing fruits and vegetables inside. You can store it for up to 20 years or you can enjoy it today, right? So during COVID, a lot of our senior citizens were eating your food, eating that Are You Serious pack um, on a regular basis. So check that out. Um, that is on sale. So um, go ahead and use the code BEGLEY, B-E-G-L-E-Y. You're going to be guaranteed 
free shipping on your order. And on top of that, Pastor, this is going to be for, let's just say, one week from today. We're going to throw in on every Are You Serious pack one of our herbs, organic herbs and spices. Okay, so peppercorns or jalapenos, 100% organic. We're going to give those to you free of charge with every Are You Serious pack. Folks, this helps support Pastor Paul it does. and his ministry. And I want to thank you in advance for doing that because, Pastor, we just had some time together at yes. the, the Watchman Conference. I know uh, in my heart, I can only speak from my heart, but the Lord, it's weighing heavily that, you know, I don't know how much time we have left. But, boy, I tell you, I just want to praise and serve the King, Amen. serve our King, our Amen. Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ, during this time. and. And hopefully bring some souls to Christ like you do on a regular basis. And Amen, brother. Uh, it means so much, the work that you do. And I am honored, absolutely honored to call you a friend. Thank you. Amen. Sir. Well, same here, Chance. And I just love you and your wife. And I love I love the, the, the reason you do what you do and the difference you make in so many people's lives and the veterans that you have that are there. All your employees are, are veterans. And so I just want to say thank you for what you do. And, and, and I'm going to say to the folks out there, guys, get over there. Go over to simply uh, simplycleanfoods.net or pick up that phone and call it right there. You see it on the, the numbers right on the screen. Call, get your order. Sounds like there's some things we should get. Not that. We should probably definitely get the Are You Serious pack. Let's get that put away so you got 30 days worth of food. Probably should uh, also get those prawns before they're going to go. They're gone. And it wouldn't hurt to get that radio if you can pull that off as well. So take the time. Focus on it. Give Chance a call tonight before the prawns are gone. Okay? Before the prawns are gone. All right. Chance, thank you for coming on being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Great information. Thank you, Pastor. Blessings to you and your family. And uh, Mike, if you're listening, thank you, brother. And uh, God bless you, sir. Thank you. All right. All right, Chance, we will see you. God bless, brother. Chance Gibson, folks. I mean, really, just a great, great guy. He loves the Lord. And uh, and he has a great company. And he really does do quality products. So. Check it out, okay, because you really will be glad you did. Amen. Well, I guess Heidi was uh, sent out an email. Heidi sent out an email uh, to everybody out there pretty well. If, you have, if you're not on Heidi's email list or on my Publicly Prophecy email list, please let us know and we'll get you on it because she just sent out some incredible information, including the fact that we're going to have a webinar May the 31st called Pole Shift. It's time to finally talk about it. It's in the Bible. It's in Isaiah chapter 24. But it is absolutely uh, happening. I mean, all the scientists are admitting this now, that we're going to have a pole shift. We've had them before. We're going to have again. It's going to be catastrophic. And that the signs are everywhere that it's coming. There may be some um, shifting already taking place. The Bible says the earth's going to reel and rock like a drunkard, man. Guys, go to Eventbrite. We don't have it. We don't have the uh, tickets ready yet on our website, but we do at Eventbrite. So there you see it on the screen. Miss ZD will probably help you out there with putting some in the chat room or a Robo Mom or some of them, and they'll keep you up to date. But please get your tickets. It's May 31st. Absolutely. And so, uh, wow. And you really, if you haven't got Revelation 9 11 by now, are you serious? I mean, it's phenomenal. It's it's still number one, new release, especially right now in um, New Testament commentaries in that category. It's up high in three different Christian categories. I just seen it was in the paper, and I didn't even know it. Uh, the local villages paper here, but it, it's being released. A media release was done. It is the number one uh, prophecy book in Amazon, of all the different books of prophecy, it is number one. And that's, I'm stunned with that because Jonathan Kahn's out there and David Jer David Jeremiah's out there and Tom Horn's books, of course, are great. And just so many wonderful, it's shocking that that happened. But you folks have been doing it. You've been going there. You've been getting not only just one book, but you've been going, you've been ordering five at a time and you've been giving them away. I had a, I had a, a couple just came to my home 
just uh, a few three or four hours ago. They had bought they had gotten five on Amazon. They came over one know if I would in would if I would sign them all to to give to their family members, and I did. I can't do that with everybody, but of course, you know, I try my best. But here you go. Get get yours now. Get yours now. Uh, order Revelation 9-11 uh, and uh, get ready for it. Now, let's go right now. We have breaking news, guys. We absolutely have breaking news. And this has to do with the explosions. It has begun. Apparently, it has begun. Breaking news. Explosions in Iran and in Syria and in Iraq. And Heidi came in here a few minutes ago. We want to thank our online uh, family because the, there's a couple of you. This is breaking, J.D. It just happened. Iran is now confirming they are under attack. I just knew it was going to happen on a Thursday night, just in time for Mike around the world to give us an update what this means. You knew it was coming, and especially when I saw the Iranian foreign minister on television on MSNBC this morning and again on CNN tonight. I knew it was coming. Well, uh, Israeli Airstrikes reported in Iran, Syria, and Iraq, according to the Jerusalem Post. Uh, the Syrian reports indicate airstrikes have targeted sites belonging to the Syrian army and uh, in uh, several different locations in southern Syria. Also, an Israeli missile strike targeted a site early this Friday morning. It's already Friday morning, early Friday morning in Iran. The report came shortly after local sources reported explosions in Ifasan in central Iran and also in southern Syria and in Baghdad in Iraq this morning, early Friday morning, uh, which this would be uh, Friday morning, April the 19th in the Middle East. Flight trackers show several flights headed for Iran had to turn around. These are these are commercial airlines had to turn around and divert from their planned routes, including several United Arab Emirate flights, UAE flights, had to turn around. The reports of strikes on the sites belonging to the Syrian army. I'm looking right now at pictures of uh, air uh, missile strikes coming down. Uh, and also there is somebody's got on TikTok. It's, it's in all Arabic, so I'm not going to try to play that. Um, and also residents of Erbil and Mosul in Iraq are reporting hearing sounds of fighter jets early Friday morning there in Iraq. The explosions came as Israel promised to respond to a drone and missile attack, including ICBM intercontinental ballistic missiles that were fired at Israel last Saturday night, 320 either cruise missiles or ICBM or killer drones. And so these explosions have come, as Israel promised, to respond to a drone and missile attack conducted by Iran Saturday night against Israel. The Iranian attack came in response to the alleged Israeli airstrike that had targeted a building, the consulate, that was adjacent to the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Uh, killing seven of the top brass of the Iran Revolutionary Guard. Um, the Iranian attack came in response to the alleged Israeli airstrike that targeted that building, the Iranian embassy consulate in Damascus. Um, now, also, while this is going on, and of course, this is all just now developing, because this news is just now breaking. You heard it here first, really. I mean, because just as soon as it happened, there were a couple of folks in our chat room who were watching, knew and probably knew like I did that this thing was coming. And as soon as the, the news broke, uh, they were able to get it to us uh, coming out of the Middle East. So this is a very serious situation now that we have. Israel has responded now to, to what extent this is. I do not know. And Mike around the world will probably know, okay? Um, he'll have more intel. Can he share it with us? I don't know. Uh, we'll try to pry, pry it out of him, but if he can't, if it's classified, he won't. But at least we'll get some information. Now, the question I'm going to ask is, is the Americans helping at all? 
is anybody, well, they don't really have any, they don't have really any uh, <laughs> allies. Jordan helped them because Jordan didn't want to get hit either, and so did Saudi Arabia. The, the United Kingdom jumped in because they knew that was the right thing to do. So we thank God for all of those nations that helped. But uh, the Americans certainly are there for the Iranians, I mean, for the Israelis. But the question is, do you think any Americans, do you think the United States helped in any way? They said they weren't going to help. Biden said he wasn't going to help. But you just got to think that we had to be helping them. Uh, in the airspace or coordination or something, but I don't know. Okay. I don't know. This is a very serious situation developing. We're praying. We're watching close. Uh, we realize that uh, the world everywhere, chaos is everywhere. We have tornadoes going across the United States tonight. We have Israel has attacked Iran. Uh, that we know, and not just Iran, but they've hit targets in Iran, targets in Syria, targets in Iraq. And, uh, and just to extent of how strong this was, we're not sure. Uh, if you give me a moment, I will try to continue to find out more information. We also know that uh, there's nobody's even talked about this. But did you guys know that the Iranian special forces seized a cargo vessel? in a key shipping lane. And guess who owned this boat? Here you see a helicopter dropping Iranian Marines or what they, I don't know what they call their group, but they dropped them on the ship and they took this ship. It's a cargo ship over in the Straits of Hormuz. And here's the thing. It, this ship is owned by an Israeli billionaire He's actually the 83rd most richest man in the world. They took this uh, Israeli cargo ship by force. This You don't even hear about this. This happened two days ago. No one's even discussing that. And so when you say that Iran is, is not involved, they're involved in everything going on. They're funding this entire, uh, this entire Middle East problem. All these proxies, whether it be... And oh, by the way, is anybody even talking about Hezbollah hitting Israel yesterday, wounding 18 people? I know I covered it, but I didn't hardly hear anybody else covering it. It's unbelievable. But there's explosions tonight, apparently. And you got to wonder, will Iran respond instantly or, or soon? Um, but uh, explosions in Iran and Iraq and Syria. And we're going to be, Mike from the world's going to join us tonight. There's chaos everywhere. And it's really, really uh, crazy what's going on right now. Um, it's, it really is. Um, and so, and I'm looking through the, the media right now. Nobody is covering this except the Jerusalem Post and Paul Begley. Not. Uh, I don't know where everybody else is. They're asleep at the switch. I don't know what's going on. But uh, nobody. So we'll wait and see. I'm sure they will eventually. They're probably got to get on the phone with the White House and find out what they're. And the Fox News isn't so far. Nobody in the media, in the, in the United States, lamestream fake news media, nobody. And I'll tell you why. These guys on the media are scared to jump out and say, here we go, uh, until they get their talking points from the White House. We'll be right back, guys. I'll finish the song for you. We'll be right back with more, including Mike from around the world, in just a moment. Heidi's coming in right now. She might have something. Do you? The United States has confirmed it. It's on Sky News now. It's not on here.
So, so okay. So you're saying that um, it's still not any okay. Only person else. Only uh, okay. I can't find it, but Sky News. Let's say ABC and all these other guys. Fox hasn't been on television with it. I'm sure you've been watching. Real Voice America, yeah, and Real Voice. I was on Real Voice America for nine eleven an interview. Okay, you probably we might hear it out of Newsmax and and those guys first. The big main guys are all sitting back, scared to report till they t- know what to do. What you're saying is though, the stock market is immediately crashing around the world. Is it is it going to be futures tomorrow is going to be bad for America? Oil prices went through the roof. Cryptos are dropping. Other 24 markets are dropping. And somebody reduced Israel's credit rating because of this attack within one hour. This attack happened 56 minutes ago. So we've already got the world reacting. They must have been sitting there waiting to push the button. Okay, so world markets are already crashing. Cryptocurrencies are falling. Um, and Israel's credit rating has just been brought down, lowered, and uh, oil prices are skyrocketing. So tomorrow, the U.S. Dow Jones will probably be a very, very bad day. And uh, and because I think people realize since Israel did respond, because Israel did respond. You know Iran is going to come back again. Iran has threatened to use weapons that have never been seen before, and they're saying they will hit the Israeli nuclear facilities. So then now this war is no longer about Israel and Hamas, but it's Israel and Iran direct, which is who it's been the whole time anyway. And are we on the start of World War III? And this is why we wrote the book. and really. It took me two years with Troy Anderson to write this book. Two years to write it. I wanted it out a year ago, but it just couldn't because we just went too comprehensive on our our, our, our research. And then the publishers delayed it. And then God is the one who really delayed it. God wanted this book to come out right now because he knew. God had to have known. You know God knew what was about to happen. And so... You know, I'm already working on the next book with, with Troy right now, uh, which we will get out in, within a year unless God wants to change that and speed it up or slow it down. I'll let God handle it. But I'm going to say this. We put this stuff in here to prepare people for nights like tonight. Is the hook in the jaw? Someone just asked. I think so. Because let me tell you something. Turkey's going to jump in this thing. Russia's going to jump in this thing. They've both been laying low. But if you read your Bible, if you read the scriptures, they will get involved especially if this has now moved us into full-blown psalms 83 on the brink of ezekiel 38 and if apollyon is coming out of that pit like we wrote about like god showed me it's about to happen world war three is just around the corner we'll be right back with mike from around the world in just a moment Get some coffee. Calm down. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Your resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is a sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. My God is able to save and deliver and heal 
and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden what happens when God says to move. I feel him moving it now. I feel him doing it now. I feel him doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. This is the sound of troubles rattling. Yeah, this is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of troubles rattling. We do have breaking news. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, and I will put my spirit in you, and I will place you in your own land, and you shall live. I will place you in your own land. You shall live, live, live. That's right. Live. live. Are you serious? Mike from around the world is going to join us in a minute. Information flowing in now. But the mainstream media is still asleep. Apparently waiting on the White House to give them their talking points, including Fox. Where's Fox? We have more information coming in right now. Heidi Begley all over it. Uh, guys, there's been an attack on uh, the United Israel, apparently, according to the Jerusalem Post. And according to now the Daily Mail online, finally, that Israel strikes Iran as explosions are being reported in Iraq and in Syria after Iran launched unprecedented missile barrage on Israel back on Saturday night. Heidi has just brought in the S&P has just cut Israel's long-term rating from A-plus to AA-minus-minus, according to Israeli News and the Jerusalem Post. So the S&P has just cut Israel's long-term ratings financially. And so... This affects their ability when they borrow money if they, or whatever they may do. It affects their interest rates. It also affects their, because it affects their financial standing. And you have to understand, Israel's one of the most, they don't operate on debt. They operate above, always in the black. I mean, this is the way they do. Of course, since the attack on October 7th, and there's been no tourism going in there, and the United States hasn't sent any extra funds in since the attack because you see the Republicans fighting in the Congress. You know, they're about ready to throw now Mike Johnson out. You got Margie running around and you got the you got the you got total chaos in the Republican Party. While the uh, the Israelis are needing 
to know that their big brother is standing with them. And you have to wonder tonight, who is standing with Israel besides the the born-again believers and God? I mean, uh, who's standing with Israel? I guess the church of Jesus Christ. And not even everybody in the church stands with Israel, which is shocking for me to still deal with, but that's another subject. Mike Round World's going to be here. We're, we hope Mike's going to be here, and we hope he can give us some even inside intel to what's happening tonight. Chaos everywhere. What's that? Fox is just now breaking the news at 10 o'clock. They had to wait till Handy got off, huh? Okay. How wimpy is that? So we were ahead of Fox by, thank you guys, but we, we were ahead of Fox by almost an hour. Um, because they have to wait to find out what they're supposed to say. Here's the officials. ABC News is saying, and and the Daily Mail is now reporting it, that strikes hit sites in Iran. However, it is unclear what target was hit or to what extent is the damage. It also, it becomes in response to Iran. Of course, we know about that Saturday night attack. But Footage shared on social media appears to show anti-aircraft fire striking over the city of Isfahan, Isfahan in central Iran. And Israel's war room shared video of sirens sounding in that city. The city of Isfahan is the site of one of Israel's nuclear facilities. And I've known that. We've seen, uh, they've had cyber attacks by Israel there and different things. But then further explosions have been reported in Iraq near Baghdad and in southern Syria. Um, And there is some footage, there is some sirens, there's some different things. We're still waiting to find out just what was hit exactly. It does sound like it, it could have been a nuclear facility in Iran could have been hit. Now, Iran said that if Israel hits one of their nuclear facilities, they will then hit Israel's nuclear facilities. So here we go. You're talking World War. I mean, first of all, you know you're in Psalms 83. Second of all, you may be entering Ezekiel 38. And finally, we may be on the verge of, of what we wrote here in Revelation 9-11, and that's the release of Apollyon from the bottomless pit, who then brings about, four. he releases four more fallen angels from the river Euphrates, and those four angels come out of that river, and that river runs through four countries, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran. And three of those four are in play tonight. And then... Apollyon, that starts World War III, or what they call in the Bible in Revelation chapter 9, it's called the Sixth Trumpet War. Kills one-third of the world, folks. I'm not sure that that's where we're at. But let me, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that we're there, but I will read where I know we are and then tell you where we're headed. So if you go to Psalms 83 for a minute, you here's what was, and this sounds like Iran. This sounds like the Ayatollah Khomeini speaking. Listen to this. Keep not thou silence, O God. This is Psalms 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. Be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies have made a turmoil, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They've taken crafty counsel against thy people. They've consulted against thy hidden ones. They've said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they've consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And these are a consolidation of countries involved in that. Now, if you go to Ezekiel 38, 
So I say Psalms 83, we've been in really since October 7th. We certainly, I know we did. When it, when Iran came over here, when Iran fired 320 missiles and rockets and drones at Israel, I knew then this is this is Psalms 83 because Iran's never done that in the 76 years that Israel has been a nation. Now let's look at Ezekiel 38. In Ezekiel 38, here's what it says. The Lord says, and Mike Ronald is going to join us any minute. Verse 40, verse 14 says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, thou shalt not know it. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. And it shall be in the latter days, so it's the end times, and I will bring thee against my land Israel that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I've spoken in old time by my servant, the prophet of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. It shall come to pass at that same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. God will get angry. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea, the fowls of heaven, and the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down. The steep hills shall fall. Every wall shall fall to the ground. Ezekiel 38. And, of course, then that war continues. The conversation goes into Ezekiel 39, where God destroys the armies that come against Israel. So are we on the brink? Have we, I believe, I believe, without a doubt, He's, Psalms 83 is here. We're seeing it. We're watching it. We're in it. It's on. Now the question is, will Ezekiel 38 come right in behind it? If you remember my interview with Dr. Chuck Misler from 2015, the only time I ever got to interview him live, and I asked him, and he died uh, just a few months after this interview, and I said, Dr. Misler, can you tell me? What is the next major biblical landmark that's going to happen? And he said, it's either Psalms 83 or Ezekiel 38. Which comes first, he said, the chicken or the egg? In other words, one will cause the other or this one will cause that one. But either way, once it starts, there's no stopping. And now my next question is, does that then take us all the way in to Revelation 9, 11, and Apollyon, is he about to come out of the bottomless pit? God told me that he's about to. But now I'm wondering if the key is in the lock. I don't know. We will watch. Mike from the world is going to join us in just a few moments. Um, we're certainly tonight. It is Passover, guys, on Monday. A lot of you have already sent your Passover offerings. I want you to know that later tonight, after we're done with talking to Mike, I am going to, and after the altar call, I am going to pray a special prayer for those of you who have already sent Passover offerings and those of you who are sending. We will do another special prayer on Sunday night. And then on Passover on Monday, I will come on at some point and do another prayer. And Passover, of course, lasts all week next week. So during this time, if you want to get your offerings in with your special prayer request between now and Monday, that'd be a great thing to do. You could send check or money order in the mail with your prayer request. Send a prayer request. There's seven blessings that come with the Passover offering. And if there was ever a year 
to give during the Passover, it's now. And some of you need your homes to sell. Some of you need insurance settlements to come in. Some of you are waiting on disability to be a, uh, uh, to be approved with back pay. Some of you are waiting on inheritances. And all these lawyers are tying to God can break all that free. And he wants to prosper you. He wants to bless you. He wants to take sickness away from you. These are He wants to send an angel to give you direction in these end times. If there was ever time you need to get close to God, it's right now. Okay? It's right now. And uh, look, because, and you need to know what's going on. I just talked to a couple of people. Israel Hall said he read my book. He said it's phenomenal. He said, Pastor Paul, actually, you could have wrote a book for each out of each chapter. Each chapter could have been its own book. It's like, it's incredible. Um, I just talked to another man. He's my security uh, guard for me at church. Does the security detail. He's, he's assigned just to me. He said he read the book, said it was absolutely incredible. They went and he went and got five more off Amazon and came over and asked me if I'd sign them all to give them to other people. So I, I did. People, listen to me. We've been in ministry 40 years. I just seen where Jerry Savelle died. And I went back and watched. He preached Sunday. Jerry Savelle preached Sunday. He died Monday. And I and I think he was 80. I, think, I can't remember what he was. 83 or something. Maybe he was 78. I can't remember. But, he, you know, he's up there. And I went and watched his sermon. And in his sermon, he s- starts preaching on Matthew 24. Four. And he's telling the people that the Bible says there's going to be wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And his his point was, see that you're not troubled by this. See, some folks, because they don't have a close relationship with God, they live in fear. They see these things happening. And they immediately live in fear. But if you, who know your God, in Daniel 11.32, for those that know their God shall do mighty exploits and teach others. If you know, and what Jerry Savelle was saying, and it was, I've come too far. I've had, I've lived off faith too long. For 55 years, he preached the gospel. And he used to run around with Dr. Lester Sumrall. Now, I never met Jerry Savelle, but of course, I was ordained by Dr. Lester Sumrall. And he he said that, you know, he mentioned Oral Roberts and he mentioned Kenneth Hagan, but he also started telling stories about Dr. Sumrall and how that men of great faith and, and men and women of faith don't back down when things get hard. They don't run and hide. They step up. They prove their faith by their works. You're not saved by works, but you're saved by grace. But you'll prove you have it because you'll stand for God. You're not afraid. And so this is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. I know that we're on the brink. Chaos is everywhere. I haven't even been able to get to every one of my stories tonight because of all the information here uh, this this becomes massive big news. But, I mean, there's there's tornadoes tearing through the land tonight in America, especially in Illinois, large hail falling, water events, massive rain in Dubai, water, five and a half inches in 12 hours. They only get three inches a year. They don't even have a runoff system. It flooded unbelievably. Huge, unprecedented floods in Pakistan, Kayakistan, Afghanistan and Russia killing dozens of people in each country. There's massive flooding in that part of the Central Asia. There's an 80-foot wave that that was seen on some of the uh, computer systems. I don't know if it was a glitch or a real event. I really don't know. There was east coastal east coast coastal flooding that took place. Okay? And then you've got these crazy folks protesting over there at the Columbian University. 108 people were arrested, including Congresswoman Ilian Omar's daughter was arrested among the 108. 
What were they test? What were they protesting against, Begley? Against Israel. So much so that they had to be arrested. And then why did 9-11 call centers go out in Nevada and South, and South Dakota and Nebraska and Texas? There's just so much going on right now. And so, again, send your uh, Passover offerings in with the prayer request. So when we take them to Israel with us, we go to the wall with your prayer request. This is the Passover season. God wants to bless you with seven blessings of the Passover. You want to be sure you're you're in where you're supposed to be. Don't come empty-handed, he said. Don't blow this off. He wants to bless you, okay? Mike Brown of the World is going to join us now any moment. We hope to know um, what's happening. Um, does Can he share with us more intel? Um, Heidi is showing us that Israel's credit rating has just been has just been lowered never happened in the history of that nation that's one of the most prosperous nations in the world if not the prosperous uh why would their credit rating go down and it it went down just within within what a half hour of the uh apparent attack there's a lot going on mike's going to know more i'm sure Joining us right now on this very prophetic evening from somewhere located up on this planet, it's Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? God bless you, Pastor Paul. <clears throat> Did we get it right last week? Got it dead on. You said we'd be oh, talking yeah. about war, weather, and water, and you nailed all three. Let's start with war because, as you probably know, I'm sure you know, that the Isra Israelis have have made their offensive attack on Iraq, on Syria, and on Iran. And the, that news just now breaking on the mainstream media. We knew about it about an hour ago. You probably knew before that. Can you tell us what you know, what's going on here with Israel and uh, Iran and, and the entire Middle East? Well, they finally went through with it. They were they had three aborts uh, this week. Wow. So, um, yeah, three aborts. In fact, that began... Uh, Sunday evening, and of course, all the way up until now. This is a uh, low-level target, but the heart of operations with uh, Iran. That's where they. That's where all their in Isfahan is where they do their research and development of nuclear weaponry. Okay. So this is a this is a uh, message, of course, but it is the beginning of a what could be a long campaign. This will invite international rebuke. Uh, everybody should be familiar with that and get themselves prepared for that. Yeah. Right. Yep. Strong international rebuke. And so we'll start going into a direction uh, that we've not uh, been in before, but it's going to be very divisive. Hopefully Christians do not get caught up in the divisiveness um, because if people were sickened by all these folks who suddenly turned against Israel and supported Hamas activities, they're going to be sickened by what happens next. Are you saying that the, because the world condemnation that's getting ready to come on Israel is going to be worse than even the fact that they were fighting Hamas in Gaza and they were getting a lot of heat then? It's going to even be worse now because they're going to be blamed for causing the war to expand regionally. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's going to be much worse, especially in the USA. And here's why. I do realize, you know, they have these um, target packages that are being struck in uh, uh, Iran and various places but i'm going to point everybody's direction back here to the usa we all know we had uh response systems go down yet again yes we did at first they said it was um cellular activity right the cellular companies went down well press balls a hardware issue it's a hardware issue. Hardware. What, what do you mean? Yeah. I mean, what do you mean? That's bad. That's bad. That's you'd rather have a hacker. You don't want a hardware issue. And what that means is, some of these devices, some of these uh, devices, and your iPhones and everything else. In fact, this is why Apple did what they did with the with the brand new iPhone. They had to get everybody replaced. Um, China is one of the largest manufacturers of uh, integrated circuits. Right. 
and 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 MCUs or uh, those little tiny processors, microcontroller units. They are the largest. Uh, they have the largest production sites for this. They also have a small business normally uses Chinese companies to develop circuit boards, to develop uh, or to put together circuit boards, um, print them, put the electronic components on them. And of course, those products are distributed around the world. China, Chinese people are very smart concerning electronics, right? Inside the circuit board, here's what was found. With no electronic components on that circuit board, these are four, five, six, seven layer circuit boards. They're very tiny. Inside those layers, circuitry was found. That's bad. Yeah. Right? right. So just imagine somebody gets a circuit board printed, right? For some some a coffee pot, a coffee maker. And somebody gets that, and they get the circuit boards back, they inspect them. The circuit boards are perfect, right? They assemble those in the USA. What they couldn't see was on the internal layers of that circuit board, there was a control system, right? Okay. Secondary circuitry that, that is not, was not developed uh, by those engineers. And so, because this is, um, in, in essence, the circuit board itself became a uh, electronic component, a smart electronic component. So when you have hardware that starts shutting down in 27 states, right? On the East Coast right now, there's a 911 issue. There's a DMV issue on the East Coast right now. There are two power company issues on the East Coast right now. There are water treatment plant issues on the East Coast right now, what? right? It's starting to spread. So we all know what this is. It's not hackers? And it's not hacking? No, this is not hacking. This is hardware. This is hardware but failure. What, well, why you is it going bad? Well, why is it going bad? Well, you don't have synchronized hardware failure like this. No. Remember back when uh, MH370, I believe it was, when, when that company from Texas, um, they had folk representatives on that, on that aircraft. Plane, on that right? plane, yep. Um, do you know that some of those folks knew the relationship with, uh, they, they knew intimate details of companies that were in China that were working here in the USA. Um, they knew what they were doing. They knew it. And so the military at that time also began to switch all of its hardware, right, to U.S.-based hardware. They got rid of all Chinese chips. You remember that? Yeah. The Navy had to get rid of all Chinese chips. Um, everybody did. Why? Because they had a, they had the shut-off uh, circuitry in there, which could be enacted by radio. How they would do that is they sent a balloon over you know, the area, that balloon would then ping those devices and shut them off. So it didn't matter if it, if, if it were networked or not, they could shut those devices off. Um, so here we are, right, right at the brink of this Iranian issue, right? We start having issues with our emergency systems. And by the way, 911, Right? That's tied to the FBI, CIA, and all these different places. So it's part of the critical infrastructure. And it is, uh, well, we, they have some things they have to do. Phone companies are starting to go down. All right, so, so it's been quite That's a few crazy. things that have been hit. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so the websites still work, uh, but the hardware shut down. The hardware shut down. So you can access some websites, but you can't. You, there's no operational uh, validity to those signs right now because of what was uh, taken out. So this is where we are. This is connected. I'll say that loosely. Well, let me say it gently. This is likely connected to what's happening in the Middle East. It is likely a part of a larger campaign. And we're at the, you know, the low, lowest level of this campaign that we're going to see. In other words, these would be the peaceful times. So this, this attack by uh, Israel on locations in Iran, which apparently is that nuclear facility or at least that nuclear brain trust of the, of the nuclear campaign. Also, bombs are going on in southern Syria yeah. and, and, and also in Baghdad. Can you tell us yes. what they're hitting in those two locations? Well, they're going after, they're going after these. Two of them are, are air defense sites, right? But they're focused right now on the support systems dealing with Iran's ability to overwhelm uh, any one area with missile barrages. So what they're going for is the, these uh, radar systems, 
right? Uh, they're trying to get those out of the way. These are Russian radar systems, by the way. Even the even the attack against Israel, do you not know that was a Russian that that was a, a Russian tactic, right? Even down to the armaments, you- that was uh, fully Russian. Uh, that was a Russian tactical. Uh, Are you saying Russia is the one that orchestrated Iran's attack on Israel? Iran is operating, u- utilizing Russian procedures, okay. Russian offenses, Russian plans, right? So that means it's highly coordinated with Russia. And who's been supporting all this? Well, Iran, is, is, they get $88 billion, you know, that revolving money from China yeah. because of petroleum, okay? Right. That's, that's revolving. Right. And those numbers are are not accurate. Those numbers are uh, somewhat degraded uh, by a large deal. So what we now have are three countries. Right. I know people, they don't want to hear this, but you have Russia, you have China and you have Iran. They have a joint force. Um, they have joint force operational planning against the West. Right. Russia is pinned to the wall. You have folks in the White House who, well, they may not see hidden things about Russia. They they can't afford to give up the Ukraine. That's the only thing protecting the Western alliance, and it looks like it's faltering. Uh, you have China, who is supporting, um, they're paying out big money, right? Big money, Pat Paul, right. to both Russia and Iran. How can China do that? That's what everybody should ask. How can China give away, you know, basically trillions of dollars to both of those countries. I don't know. Right? How could they do that? Because sanctions are not doing anything. Right? People should be aware of this. They should put this picture together. And then all of a sudden we're starting to have these USA-based anomalies. Right? Right. Uh, the, the, the bridge that was taken down. Yes. It, all these things. But again, you have you have um, of course we have these folks over here who are arrogant. I believe this is going to wake some of them up. But um, in our leadership, we've been having a problem for a long time. Uh, I believe that this is going to wake some of those people up. Now, keep this in mind also. Iran is not bluffing when they're talking about uh, retaliation. No. Okay. Some of the people out there they understand and they know that for the last um, two three days. Um, there have been target packages exchanged uh, by with our forces. Some of the people know this. Um, I, I can say that because it was public. Anybody who had access to the Internet could have picked this up. Uh, they're probably noticing a bit of uh, nothingness right now, right? Uh, because certain things have gone hot, you should right, say. Right, right. Um, but those were a lot of packages exchanged right uh you're talking about putting logistics together they're getting their uh sea base offenses together right all this stuff is being put together by nato forces okay. right now okay. right okay. it's carried on right now so they've been working at breakneck speed to get this done joe biden has been he, he's been trying to talk everybody out of it here's the issue though um even if people would have listened to joe biden and not gone in right it would have been a bigger problem anyway. You still have China growing. You still have Iran growing. You still have Russia uh, commanding you know, both parties. So this was coming regardless. And Israel had to make a stand by itself. Now, is this a big mistake? No, it is not. It is not. It's something that was necessary. Will the world see it as a big mistake? Yes, they will. Yeah. Because now they're going to do. Every, now they're going to have the power to do what they need to do by force. Uh, people will be imprisoned over this. I'm telling what? you that now. Um, they will Where? be in prison. Who, who, this. Now, the credit rating, they've already, within one hour, less than an hour of the attack, Israel's credit rating was dropped from A um, plus. Some of those folks will to be in prison. Minus. Who's going to yep. get put in prison? Who, are you talking Americans? No, th- these are, we're talking about Israel, Pastor Paul. The, the teeth of are many ta- wolves okay. are about to come out against Israel. Okay. And they're it's going to be against so Israel. So you're saying they're going to start arresting Jews in different parts of the world. Well, no, they're going to go after uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's oh, yeah. uh, members. That's who. Okay. But, but here's the unfortunate part. Wow. If people knew what was, what was down the road, they would absolutely support Benjamin Netanyahu a thousand percent right now. But they don't know, and you can't convince them.
right? You just can't do it. Um, it it's kind of like prophecy. First of all, you know prophecy very well, but yeah. you can't make a person hear prophecy if no. they're deaf. Nope. You can't do that. You can't make them see the truth if they're blind. And so we face a situation just like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that little dream I was telling you about where somebody presented a tablet. And there were many plans on that tablet. And they were trying desperately to, to, to have our leadership look at that tablet, that dream. Everything took off after I was telling you about that, right? Yep. Now, but that interestingly enough, they acted on that. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, they and, did act on that. And I was, let me ask you this question because it's kind of funny. We're talking about all these things happening, of course, and, and uh, the war, which is a, now really going to expand because you know Iran's going to is going to retaliate, and the world's going to justify their retaliation, which will make it even worse. Donald Trump, he's within an eyelash of somebody throwing him into jail. Uh, are it's we true. on the, are the stone steps? Are we getting a oh, whole my Lord, lot Pastor closer? Paul, could it all come together? Could 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 this all be coincidence? My goodness. No, it's not. I, I, you know what? I really do hope that, that nobody out there thinks that I'm patting myself on the back or anything from a dream or something like that, right? I right. hope nobody ever does that because I, I think the only reason the Lord would ever give me anything like that is because I have a microphone from time to time. That's, That's right. what I believe. That's right. And just a vessel. That's all. But, That's right. you know, that, that those dreams are like plagues to me. Right. I don't like having. Them. No, I agree. Nevertheless, with you. they come in a way because you have to deal with this. For me, it's a very real thing, but you can't get others to see what you see. That's very rare for a person to see what you see. And with the stone steps, it, it just won't go away. You know, whenever I think it's going to go away. Right. So, OK, Lord, we have a reprieve then something else happens. And, and right. of course, Donald Trump is at the center of it. Right. In the meanwhile, Pastor Paul, according to that, what the Lord showed me, the people are changing and they're they're becoming just like they were in that dream. The stone steps, you know, th these people were implacable. You could not make peace with them. You could not. You know, it, it was a deep rooted hatred. And of course, at the same time, right when the stone steps happened, um, 20 million people died. Oh, uh, no, um, no, that That no. missile barrage that came into this country. So, so we got attacked. So as Trump, in your dream, or uh, was 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 arrested, or let's just say this, handcuffed, maybe convicted of something, whatever, and, and they're walking him down the stone steps, there's then a strike, a missile, some kind of an attack on America that kills 20 million shortly people? Shortly after, yeah, shortly after, instantly, shortly after, and from there, uh the the face of everything was different everything changed nothing went back to normal no, it was, I guess from not. there uh it was you know chaos that that was just unfortunate and and the worst part about it is you know like i was telling you i told you about that dream that even prior to the to the actual act of the stone steps that um the the usa was overcome by something with tentacles that was reaching out all over that. I believe that was the um, COVID-19, right? Okay. That came okay. from the West and reached out everywhere and touched everybody. I believe that was COVID-19 because right after that, prosecutions began. Now, but one thing I didn't tell you was okay. even now, even right now, I can almost guarantee you that many Christians out there are conflicted. They're, they're going to become even more conflicted. Right, because they're trying deeply to find who they can, what they can trust. Well, normally yeah. that causes high tensions between Christians. So I have a piece of advice. In what was it in the Book of Jude? They were, they were, they asked um, a person in the Book of Jude. They said, "Can you lead us? You know, we want your son to lead us." He said, "No, you're, you're, my son is not going to lead you. God will lead you." Right. Right. It is. It is important right now for people who believe. In the living God to look back to Him for direction, not not to look for a person to save them. Somehow we got to stop doing that. Yes. Right? If if Donald Trump's situation, instead of looking to Donald Trump to save us, right, look to the Lord. Thank you. His will to be done, and then compliment by prayer Donald Trump that his life will be greatly impacted by God's truth. Right. That's how you do it. Not put the burden on the man to 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 
you know, have him saved. Because if he does go to jail, you're going to have people that just turn like a dime. And all some of those people who support him right now, they're going to turn and hate him and mock him and do just what they did before he went there. Right. Plus, the people are going to be dissatisfied. So instead of setting your setting anybody up for failure, turn to the Lord for guidance. Amen. Compliment the leadership. Right. Pray for the leadership, because whoever steps into office, I wouldn't want to be that person. Whoever well, goes in office, it is not going to be a peaceful time. The Middle East is not going back to it, to the status quo. No, it's not. It's, not, you it's, know, it's over. It, it, when Iran fired 320 missiles and ICBMs and drones, which, oh, by the way, it was impossible that 99% of those were shot down when you had that many different players. I mean, the coordination of that would have been absolutely – God had to have guided that. I don't know how that was done. But that changed it. Now Israel has struck back. Now Iran will fire back. The world's going to condemn Israel. The Gaza's still raging. Matter of fact, I have a report right here. Uh, explosions heard in Gaza. So Israel strikes back at Iran, but explosions are also heard in Gaza right now. So it sounds like Israel not only went after Iran and Iraq and Syria areas, but they went ahead and started the offensive again on uh, on. Uh, Hamas, while they're at it, um, they put, must have decided to put all no holes barred. And you know they're going to get condemned like crazy in the morning over this. Um, yeah, they are. Yeah, let me, yeah ask they you, are. let me ask you this, because I don't put my trust in Donald Trump because, uh, I mean, look, I want him to win the election, okay? I'll be honest. But he can't save us. No human being, no political party, no politician can save us. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the only one that can bring peace to the world. And you're right. If people, uh, Christians, we got to keep our faith in God and not, not be led to the left or to the right and get caught up in all of the inertia and all of the foolishness and the media and the propaganda and let all the emotions run wild. But you know what's sad, Mike? Not everybody in this country is a Christian. Matter of fact, most people in this country aren't. So what are they going to do? They're gonna they're gonna follow Trump to the and if they walk him down those stone steps, you're gonna see militias. You know it as well as I do. There's gonna be groups yeah. gathering all over this yeah. nation. It's gonna get ugly. Yep, yeah, Pastor Paul, I'll tell you, uh, those people. Some of the people will never. They'll never. Uh, they'll always. You know, follow be loyal man. Follow man to right. Donald Trump. Right? right. They'll always do that. But here was the problem, though. These when you have Christians. And they allow anything to cause them to hate their brother. They're doing nothing but the work of the devil. Because it is Satan who gives people an excuse to target their brother. So this is absolutely a time for a Christian to really, you know what? In fact, it's an opportunity for a Christian to most for the first time to experience God's deliverance. If it's one thing God wants us to know is his deliverance, right? Amen. So he didn't call us to be people of the world. In, in the Bible, it says we're in this world, not of this world, right? right. So then every Christian is, is a bit different, peculiar. We're grafted into the branch. We are his people, but we're not called to support the activities in the earth. We're called to regulate the activities in the earth. We're called to subdue this earth, to have dominion over the earth. We can do that by way of prayer, but if we don't pray, then the devils run amok, right? That's and right. good people, good people become victims or vessels of darkness that shouldn't be vessels of darkness. And so instead of condemnation, uh, this continual condemnation, because it's coming, I'm, I'm telling you now, you're going to see, it's, in fact, in certain places, it's already happening. People who were longstanding friends with Donald Trump, I go turn they, on him. There are okay. ads coming out. There are ads coming out. And this is just over the court. These people were, were, the problem is they were making fun of him before he was elected, right? Right. They were making fun of him. And then all of a sudden, when he was elected, they became friends. See, if anybody who's been in a position of leadership, they can understand this one thing. When people do that, the only reason they befriend you is so they can have a position with you. Right. In other words, they're riding the coattail of his success. Right. But if he loses his success, they'll they're going to change. They'll drop so him like a hot rock. Right. That's right. <laughs> Which he and he's still a human being. Yeah. He's a human being. And that is not a good place That's to be painful. In. And so as a Christian, right, 
Christians have a, they have this opportunity right now before them not to fall victim to the stuff that the world is doing because God forbid us model the world in God's kingdom as we live this life but we could actually step in and make a difference even right now with all this stuff running amok in fact I'll say this this is that moment of the Lord's children for the the greatest opportunities that have ever been every Christian out there knows they have they have no motivation to speak unless something comes against them, right? We when have, something comes against a Christian, that's yeah. when they go back to the Word of God. That's when they start getting the Word of God, and, and they get they get loaded up, right? They get spiritually inspired. They get stronger. They grow. In a time of peace, well, there's not really much growth. You can celebrate, you can praise, but there's not much growth. Uh, this is a work. This is one of those workout times. But I give everybody a caution of. Tensions are rising in the Middle East. Do not forget, in order for them to be successful against Israel in the Middle East, and we know by prophecy, it's going to at some point be overcome. In order for that to happen, the USA must be totally tied up somehow. So we can't forget that. Amen. We cannot forget that. Here we have some breaking news now, some more additional news, we should say. Israel does strike back tonight. They did hit Iran. There's explosions are reported near bases housing Islamic Republic's nuclear facilities. And yep. Benjamin Netanyahu has, def this is a report by Daily Mail, says Netanyahu defies Biden days after the unprecedented yep. missile barrage. So Netanyahu's going to take the blame. An official told ABC News that the strikes hit a site in Iran. However, it's unclear exactly which site that was. But footage is showed on social media appears to be uh, that it hit the nuclear facility in Isfahan, which is what you said earlier. Right. Um, now, we, I still don't know, Mike, if and maybe you know, uh, where did it hit in Iraq and Syria? What is there nuclear facilities or is there key strategic locations in southern Syria that, that uh, Israel may have hit? Do okay, you, in uh, Isfahan, right? The nuclear uh, yes. technology center yes. is in Isfahan. Yes. Right? That's the largest research complex. They have support centers, right? Some of those support centers or, uh, were compromised a while back. And so Israel is, is striking those targets. Now, some of those targets, Israel did not hit. Iran, right, or, or other parties tried to hit them directly. For example, uh, as soon as Isfahan was hit, there was a reaction almost immediate in Iraq, okay? Um, there was almost an immediate reaction in Syria. Same thing. Okay. So some of those targets, right now it's gonna be a bit confusing, but the yeah. targets in Iran are, are these uh, uh, centralized low level targets are real, right? So right now, everybody's likely on standby, Pastor and I hate to say this, but everybody is likely on standby for they have to be ready for some nuclear activity. Well, are you are you let me ask you this, because in other words, United States, Jordan, uh, the Saudis, the U United Kingdom, maybe France. If I don't know where France is at, but whoever are they all got to be on standby that Iran may launch ICBM missiles. They have to with they have with to. nuclear payloads on them. They have to. Could that happen and tonight? So they have, well, yeah, they. I know the order was everything had to be in place prior to today. Okay. Right? So so the last week was very busy. Uh, everything had to be in place. So there were lots of um, uh, uh, target package exchanges. And anybody who can access the Internet probably heard that. There were tons of them, right? We because have. people will see violence start to break out all over the place. The U.K. folks. They're going to have the biggest problems. Germany is going to have, uh, you know, the, the, uh, they're going to be below the UK. And then we're going to have our problems over here. They'll start mustering uh, by way of these little sleeper cells, right? They're going to be awakened. They're going to be activated. And, and they will be instructed to do anything they can do for maximum damage to the USA, the UK, Germany, all those uh, NATO countries. The, those instructions are known instructions. If Ar Iran is ever hit, these are standing instructions. Now, what does that mean? 
you have folks who are CEOs, presidents. You have folks who own things, right? Most most of our gas stations in the USA that people use on a frequent basis are foreign owned, right? It's nothing for them to shut those gas stations down to inconvenience the people. We already have uh, internal issues with hardware, uh, some hacking, uh, data breaches are happening tonight too, and. Um, all these things are happening at once. Why? Iran was hit. They knew the repercussions. Everybody knew the repercussions, which is why nobody really hit Iran like this. So now that those repercussions come, and they're going to be very real. We have to be ready for nuclear and chemical weapons. One of the biggest packet exchanges chemical. last night chemical. was for chemical biological warfare. Yes, that that is when 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 a country, Iran is known for chemical weapons, so is North Korea, right? North Korea has been very quiet. North Korea holds a, a huge stockpile of, of chemical weapons, right? And so we're, we're dealing in something very different. These are the elements of warfare. These are, uh, you know, these are the days that were insecurities. Uh, absolutely will be in the air. So, Mike, let me and, ask and, you, I'm looking here. Uh, Iran said... And I watched the interview with the Iranian foreign minister this morning. He was on Morning Joe on MSNBC. I saw him tonight being interviewed by Aaron Burnett on CNN. He was talking war. He was talking war. It was 8 o'clock in the evening. It was two hours, about an hour actually, before the attacks were launched on Iran. And he was already preparing. And his talk was war. Respond. We're, we will respond. We will hit them harder. We will hit them with weapons they've never heard of before. If we have to, we'll go nuclear. I mean, this guy was, and I said to myself, "Let's get. It's on. It's on tonight." And so, do you believe now that Israel has made this move, and you say that U.S. and all of the allies are on standby, red alert, high alert, ready to move? Do you think Iran's going to respond before the night is over? Or do you think there's going to be a, 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 a two, three, four days a week before Iran makes a move? That's the part you don't know. You just don't know that. They're not going to wait too long, but they'll be hit again, right? Israel has to do what they have to do before the international community comes down with a gavel, right? So you're so saying they have, to, they have to do what they have so to do. So you're saying Iran, Israel's not done. This they, no, they're, they're not, not done. one. It's not a one and done. They're 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 right. uh, they have an operation, a full blast. That's right. That's right. This war is going to rage all night and all day tomorrow, and this thing ain't going to stop. That's right. It's not done, and it's not going to be. <clears throat> it's not according to anybody's timeline except Israel's timeline, and of course, uh, retaliation and strength of retaliation timelines. Right? They they will have these visual optics things they do for visual optics to appease yes. uh, the international community. But make no mistake, Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. He understands what's in Iran. Uh, what's in Iran is not well known. It is not well known. And past Paul, there are things, weapons that people have developed that if they ever use them, uh, it's just nothing less than devastating. Right? Nothing wow. less. You've been you, saying you could, that. Uh, you have been saying that for at least a year that Iran had stuff that we don't, nobody knows. Probably chemical weapons from North Korea or or Russia, wherever they, they may have developed it. But, yeah, let me ask you, Passover's Monday. <laughs> Passover's Monday, and the reason that the Hamas said that they came across on October 7th was the, they even called it the al Ask flood, was to try, try to prevent the sacrifice and the burning of the ashes of the red heifer. They have four red heifers in the stall that are ready to go. Passover is Monday. That's the day they want to do this. But we got m rockets flying back and forth between Israel and Iran now. We're, not, we're past the proxies now. This thing yeah. went beyond the proxies. Do you believe or do you have any insight or any information on whether or not they will perform this ceremony on Monday no matter what? Well, I will say this. All, all this... Um all this international pressure is going to do nothing more, right, than to bolster their resolve in, in establishing what they need to establish in Israel. 
Right. So um, they're, they're, it's going to charge them up. You know how, if, if you ever know any families over there who are of the Jewish, um, yep. uh, deep-rooted Jewish, you know that the all these international activities do nothing more than motivate them to go forward no yep. matter what. Yep. I mean, these guys will do that. You've Nobody has ever experienced such. They can call it what they want to, but these guys have. They're they're fully committed to what they're doing. I mean, fully committed. Yep. Uh, and it doesn't matter if they die or not. It does not. In fact, they already understand that it's going to cost them everything. And so they're saying, fine, we're going to do it anyway. And they are absolutely committed to their results. So if this is their plan, uh, th this, all this activity is going to do nothing more than enhance uh, their motivations to get it done. Right, because they're putting everything in past. They, they, they are moving things right now, despite what's happening right now. Things are on the move right now. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, we. I've we never are... seen them so close to performing this ceremony. They've never been this close in two thousand no. years. They, no, uh, they yeah. are absolutely. And now I was just watching, of course, the United. Let's talk about the United Nations Security Council. The vote tonight. The vote today was twelve voted to make a Palestinian state two abstained, which was the United Kingdom and Switzerland. And one voted no, and that thank God for that one, and that was the United States that vetoed it. Because if they hadn't, this thing was going straight to the floor of the United Nations, and they would have voted to part the land of Israel by force. Uh, but but America said no. That, 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 uh, yet Biden said we're all for doing it. We're all for a two-state solution. But it's got to be because Israel and the Palestinians can negotiate it. Okay. That's right. All right. Let me ask you. This is never we we've, we've never been this close. We've I mean this is what it's all about really the building of the third temple. Who controls the temple mount? Who's going to own the land of Israel? This is the holy war that the Bible said was coming that we've been prophesying about and preaching about and I wrote a book about and everything else about. We all know this is it. I'm going to ask you, will Netanyahu <laughs> I mean, you got a certain faction there that wants to get rid of this guy like ASAP to the point they would assassinate him. Do you see him just holding the line and getting and and the, and getting this thing done no matter what the world does? I mean, are we headed to that Joel chapter 3 verse where it says the whole world. God said, I'll bring the whole world down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and plead with them not to part the land. Are we almost at that point? Well, Benjamin Netanyahu is going to do what he can do. Okay. He's going to do exactly what he can do. So he's going to do what he does until he can't do it anymore. But but keep in mind, keep in, I'll say it again, keep in mind, even with the UN, what you just said with the UN, what everybody heard, that the USA said no, right? Right. You have some others who abstained, and the rest said yes. Yes. This gives us a global sentiment to what they're about to do. So let me let me let me throw this at you. These hostilities in the Middle East, right? The secret is out concerning the position of the USA. That's all I'll say about that. The, that secret's out. Yeah. It's only a matter of time before the USA is going to have, we're going to have our hands bound up. With our hands bound up, we have no voice. We don't have a voice. Right. 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 All so right. we're going to have a moment of pause where we have no voice. And in that moment of pause, the world is going to say, part the land. <laughs> You're right. There's going to be a weakening moment that uh, it had. All right, let's let's. Uh, we're watching close. There's m news breaking. I'm sure we're going to get more. But we got to go to the water event because one of the things you said last Thursday. We're going to talk about war, weather, and water. Well, weather. I can tell you, the UN just announced. I'm going to show this shocking information. The climate chief of the United Nations said, "We only got two years left to save the world, Mike." <laughs> two years if we okay this is worse than aoc uh, she i think she said we got seven okay so before we go there we do have water events going on we had this incredible five and a half inches of rain in, in dubai they only get three inches a year they don't even have a runoff system this thing flooded them like they never seen there's floods in pakistan afghanistan kayakistan 
uh, and, and Russia, southern Russia, landslides, people dying everywhere. And uh, is this, and there was even a water event, some kind of coastal flooding in the East Coast. And that somebody reported that there was an 80 foot wave. Now, I don't know if that was a computer glitch or was there really an 80 foot wave near Antarctica? So tell us, where are we with the water event uh, and the, the, what you wanted to share tonight? Well, when, last week, when uh, somebody, when you posed that right about somebody said something about the water ripple or something like that, and uh, I want to go check that out. It was it was some sort of anomaly. I okay. think it was caused from I think it was caused from a a, a pretty sharp snap uh, ice break, right? Because at the same time, yeah, they reported a break in the ice that was uh, just an incredible break. So I believe all that was tied together. It didn't go all the way, thank God, but it was all tied together. Um, that's one issue because it continues to melt uh, at, at a pretty fast rate. Okay. But the water, okay. first of all, everybody should know by now. Everybody should know by now that we're, we're beyond speculation. Uh, the the rains are unusual. They are unusual. Yeah. And do you not know um, the other day, about two, three, four days ago, I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm going to see how many people notice. Has anybody noticed how big the water drops are? How they're big huge. They are. They're huge. They're right? huge. And so because is the hail. The, <clears throat> the water droplets, normal water droplets in the heaviest of storms are, you know, something expected. You don't expect something that feels like a water balloon bursting on you, you know, you don't expect that. And so many people should have noticed huge water droplets. I'm talking, we're talking about uh, something that seemed like it was half a cup of water. Each raindrop half a cup of water, right? Uh, some areas I noticed on the, in the uh, when they were reporting how much rain had fell, the actual time, and then the, the um, public time, which they showed on television, it was different. The rain rates were much, much, much more condensed or much faster uh, than what was reported, right? Meteorologists are trying their best to dance around scaring people to pieces, right? Because they will not tell. They won't be straightforward with these forecasts. And if, if you watch the um, Weather Channel or something like that, they're always presenting the weather as though it's usual, right? Right. And, and believe it or not, some people now believe that. They believe all this rain is usual. They believe that, uh, you know, the increased flooding is usual. You know, some people believe that because the people who are forecasting are calm, right? And we're, we haven't started the rainy season. May is a known, you know, time for the rainy season right, right. for massive flooding. And with all this pre-flooding and the fires, it's going to get worse, a whole lot worse. Right. The heating of the oceans is going to be far greater than it was uh, last year. All these elements combined are going to cause some wind, wind speeds <clears throat> and weather conditions nobody has recorded before. Mm. Right. So people mm. better get used to horizontal rain. Right. Horizontal hail. Can you imagine that horizontal hail that was reported in the last uh, three or four insane. days? That is, uh, uh, I mean, I saw hail, huge hail this week in several different places. Buckets full, larger than golf balls, falling everywhere. Uh, straight line winds. Matter of fact, Israel Hall was telling me tonight that he was out, him and his wife were out driving around in a golf cart here in the villages. And all of a sudden, he said it was a burst of wind. There was no wind. He's driving his golf cart. Whew, a burst of wind like almost tipped the golf cart over. And yep. then it was gone. And he said, is that one of my from around the world straight line wind things? A burst? I mean, is there? Is there? I know there must be seeding. I know there's seeding going on in the clouds creating that could create some of these cloud bursts and some of this craziness. But tell us about this hail. Tell us about this wind. How can hail go, well, you know, hor horizontally? Think of this. Think of this. Hail forms, right, through an updraft, which means the wind speeds have to be 120 miles an hour going straight up in the air. Now, think of that. That's from the ground up. That's, That's the direction crazy. it travels. That's how hail forms, and it is okay. held aloft 
is held aloft until it overwhelms the wind, wind speed, right? So if you take a heavy object, it takes much more wind to sustain it, but to keep it up in the air. Once the hail is larger, right, so much denser and larger and heavier than what the wind speed support, it comes falling down to the earth, but it forms from the ground up, the wind pushes the rain droplet up, it freezes, it holds it aloft. So you have these updrafts that are incredible. If a person jumped into some of these updrafts, right, um, some of the people who are around 120 pounds or something like that, they could be they could be pushed straight up in the air. Right? They, they absolutely could. Um, but now we have greater winds. The larger the hail, the stronger the winds are that's, that's holding hail aloft, right? Think about sideways movement. Now, these, these winds start from the sides. They travel laterally, and then they go up. These are straight-line winds, right? They come from all directions, being sucked in, and they go straight up in the air, right? Um, those wind speeds are going to increase, which is going to increase the hail size. So we're going to have those horizontal winds that are extremely fast, say about uh, 140, Right, uh, <laughs> and they will produce some pretty large, pretty large pieces of uh, hail. Yeah, I mean that's incredible. That that's how it was formed, and over the oceans, it's going to be far worse. It's going to be. I wouldn't be surprised if they were forced to stop all cruises at some point. Whoa! I would not be surprised. Okay, 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 okay. Mike, we're getting ready to have a webinar again. This is going to be May thirty first. Certainly, we want you to be one of the speakers, and we're calling it Pole Shift. Is are we are we close to a pole shift? Do you believe that that's part of what's going on here? Is there a tilting going on? Is that affecting the winds and the stuff? Or and we a, have a wobble. We have a wobble. Okay. Yes, but we we also have a tug, some anomalistic tug to the entire solar system. Well, that is your binary. See, it is it, it's, it's somewhat irritating because you have these folks out there. They really believe. You know, they're born. Um, they're born to believe that somehow humanity is causing these problems. Everybody should put the I picture know, together so to see where it, be where it began at, right? I'll, I'll say something. This is going to be controversial to a lot of people, that, but this is basically demonic. So, so let me tell you why I say that. A long time ago, back in, back, in the, uh, back in the 40s, right, this alien abduction thing started, right? Now, at yeah. the same time it started, people started reporting that aliens were telling them that they were hurting the earth. Think about it, right? Yeah. Then they had children. They had children. And and some of their children were reported as being taken. So many more people got that message that somehow humanity is destroying the earth. I'm, I'm, I'm being factual here because most of the people you talk to who truly are passionate about saving the planet, right? They have some sort of, of dream, intuition, or some sort of interaction spiritually and something is telling them that they're destroying the planet they're, they've been given dreams that they are destroying the planet and so they absolutely believe in this now we have another generation that's coming up right now and just about all of them believe it but you don't know it and they will they will lose their lives behind it now they're worshiping the earth right they're referring to the earth as gaia they're calling yep, it she gaia, this yep. and the other right so they're totally losing touch they're totally bought in you can't change their minds because they've to them they've had a supernatural experience that proves to them that the earth is is crying or hurting or something right um so that's what they believe so they you can't change their minds about this global the problem the reality is that all the planets are warming up all the planets are going through uh, weather anomalies right they're having weather weather based anomalies all over the place they were just talking about mars and some of the some of the brand new storms on mars and how powerful they are right uh they were talking about quite a few things and they're talking about this same activity on other planets plus when a volcano blows right indonesia who, who will who will entertain one of the uh, uh, an emergency that'll be an international emergency uh, and they're gonna have to have international relief soon Indonesia but when a volcano goes off it releases enough carbon it, it, the same amount of carbon that we would all human beings on the earth release in about what is it a hundred years so it can release a hundred years worth of carbon in a few minutes that we release the, over a hundred year time. And, and and we just had a volcano explosion there today in there Indonesia. There you go. So you're saying there there's a hundred years worth of carbon 
that They're all of man, beliefs, just all like that, of, just all like of that. Okay, just in, like that. In the book Revelation nine eleven, folks, if you go to page seventy six, for those of you who have our book, the Gaia hypothesis. Okay, it's exactly what Mike said. The Gaia hypothesis is a model in which everything on Earth is viewed as interactive parts of a single organism. It is a mixture of science, paganism, Eastern mysticism, and feminism. Those who adhere to this brief system, which includes environmentalist, globalist, and New Age groups, have become increasingly concerned that the environmental degradation is not only leading to the extinction of many species of animals, but poses an existential threat to humanity. And so right. they worship Mother Earth instead of Father God. And they re- this has become, in, the, in my book in the sixth chapter, it's called The Green Religion. This is what we're, what you're saying, Mike, that we have become, we have so forgot about God. We have pushed God out of the picture so far that he don't exist. Yeah. And yeah. then you got some guy running around hollering, we got two, if we don't, humanity's got two years left, Mike. If we don't do something right now. Every volcano that goes off is more than 100 years of what man can do. What foolishness. We have a bigger problem. It's, it's called Planet X or, or, or Nibiru or Planet Number 9 or this binary system. We got a lot bigger problem out there than, uh, than what a few tailpipes is going to do. And the biggest yeah, problem we got is in the, and the biggest problem we got, as you've been preaching forever, is the heart of man. Yep. Mike, let me say yeah. real fast. We got some breaking news just real quick on this Iran thing. Um, Iran has now fired air defenses. According to state news agencies, Iran uh, state run agency says they have been firing air defense batteries, have been fired in several provinces. And also Iran has suspended flights over several cities across their nation as it comes after Iran's FARS news agency said explosions are being heard near the airport and also near the nuclear facility there in Isfahan. And the cause of these sounds is still unknown at this moment. This is what their agency is saying. We all know what it is. But the Iranian state TV described this loud noise near Isfahan as, as ex, ex, exasper, or ex, uh Ex- exorbitant there's the word it remains under there's a lot going on so iran's trying to tell their people look we're firing back we're trying to do what we can do to stop them they've shut down there's planes i read earlier planes on their way to iran that had to be ch- turned in midair and headed somewhere else commercial airlines this thing is going yeah. is going um we're are we in psalms 83 new are we almost in ezekiel 38 mike well, I, be, I believe passport is all forming. It's all forming. I know they have no fly zones uh, that, are, that went up all over the place. They're diverting traffic. Other country. Something interesting, though, about an hour ago, uh, planes were diverted. Certain planes were diverted about an hour ago. So uh, yeah. that's interesting. But, but past of all, we're, we're just at a time. You know, I think all of us knew it. I think all of us did. All of us knew it. We're at a time where things actually change, where a lot of these uh, things that God has given, these insights, God has given many of his children are coming to pass, right? It's also a time when people have to remain, hopefully they remain calm and they're not frightened or stirred, moved about these things. Because um, uh, the other night I told some folks, I said, listen, if it happens, there's nothing we can do about it. Nope. And if it does not happen, there's nothing we can do about it because we have a different role uh, in this time that we live in. But but I hope that people are staying focused because these end times events, God demonstrated to us how hatred would be directed at those who truly believe. That yeah. means those who truly don't believe, they're going to be embraced. Those who truly believe, are going to be rejected from family members. They're going to be rejected from their friends and everything else. Why? Because they're going to have they're going to have different views, right? A Christian is not going to join in to the mob mentality and start persecuting everybody because no, um, no. fights. Believe it or not, fights broke out last night over over thoughts of Iran and Israel. Well, what about among among believers? Well, oh, okay. <laughs> among uh, who's right and who's wrong? Now, Are you in, kidding me? Columbia University 
had protesting going on today. 108 people were arrested, including Congresswoman Ilhan Omar's daughter. They drug her away in cuffs. Um, but when you say there's fights breaking out among believers, yes, you, among you're believers. saying some of them are standing with Israel and some of them are anti-Israel and are willing to fight with their brothers and sisters over this? Over external issues, even even past Paul is so petty. Even over even over this attack with Iran, right? Yeah. You have you have no doubt. You got a group of people who may not have seen the news or something, and they'll say, "Well, it's not. It's fake." And they start throwing the other half, the Christians, under the bus and back and forth. What darkness is that? What darkness is that? So we're in a time right now where these situations are going to bring the truth out of everybody, and they're just beginning. It's going to get a lot heavier. If, if anybody has been paying attention, we've been on a steady incline, right? Something will take place. There'll be a small reprieve. Something takes place is even more drastic, a small reprieve. All the while, the world is, is degrading quickly, quickly. Right now, we sit at the threshold of a brand new type governing system, and people are not paying attention. Right. We're not talking about a president. We're talking about a council taking place of the presidency. We're talking about in this country, they're wow. ready to do away with the Constitution. There, there, there's right. too much talk about suspension of the Constitution from, from all directions, right? Is there a council already in place that's managing the presidency for Biden? And I'm not saying that because of you Biden. You better believe it. You better believe it because he's – listen, he's, he's – just like uh, the, the uh, Apostle Paul said, the, the body is willing or the spirit is willing that the flesh is weak. When you get so old, you, your, yeah. your mind and your mind, you know you, what you want, but your body's not going to keep up with it. Right. But over time, then it gets totally turned inward. Right. And when it comes when it comes to policy, we're so divisive concerning policy right now that a president is is just ineffective. By himself, but he can't stand on his how own come, feet. How come right? Carrie Kennedy and her whole family, hes she's the sister of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. How can the Kennedys, the entire Kennedy clan, go to Philadelphia and embrace Biden and leave their brother on the side? Oh, easy. What, easy. How did, did they get bought? I mean, tell me how that happened. Fastball, the, you know, these folks, right, yeah. these folks, they may not have the same faith level as you do, right? Okay. And so guess what? Yeah. Their only salvation is green. Money, money, That's money. their salvation. Well, that's bad. Without, without that money, right, they are no one. They have no – in fact, think of, the, think of the most famous people you know in society. Take away their money, and who are they? Nothing. Who are they without their mansions, cases, cars, money, and everything? They're nothing because they, they don't have Christ. They don't have society. There you go. They don't live you based go. on their faith. They don't walk in the there spirit. They don't have there moral standards. They don't have convictions for God and for, for their families and for the country. So they'll do anything. They'll do anything to hold on to that They've money. They've been bought and paid you know? for by Lucifer. Yeah, they'll do anything. Is there a lot of Luciferians, Mike? Yes, sir. Yeah, they are. That's why they're so passive with their policies. Okay. Right. Well, I, 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 what was an abomination to the living God in the beginning is an abomination now. Nothing changed. Amen. Amen. But you have people who pass policies that make abominations legal, absolutely legal, right? For the people, right? Hopefully, people understand that even though it's legal <laughs> in a country, we're bound by moral, uh, a moral standard with the living God, Amen. right? Um, there, but there are too many people are too, what's the term? They're too laxed in their own personal integrity and discipline, right? right Cursing, for right. example. How many people curse and think nothing of it? How oh. many people see nudity and think nothing of it? Oh, yes, right? yes. I can't even look. You, you know what? Call it weird or whatever, but I'm old-fashioned in that. I think right. it's, this world is disgusting. It's no less it's than went, disgusting. It's went beyond. There is no moral stent. You know what Jeremiah said? The people don't even blush. No, no, they don't. They don't blush. It's no, in the book of don't. Jeremiah. It, Israel at one point got so wicked and so immoral and so sexually uh, perverted and out of control that Jeremiah said, you people won't even blush at the at the things that are going on. Um, are we there That's today? Right. 
Mike? Are we? Is America? Oh yeah, we've there been today? there. We be, America's definitely there, right? America's definitely there, and we're we're just not ashamed of it, right? We're we're portraying this. We're getting other countries to become abominations just like we are by way of our policies, right? So, uh, but but here we have again, we have a lot of people who are calling on people to save them and not the living God. That's what they're doing. This is going to cause, past this is going to cause deep divides going forward with those who truly believe. You're going to hear a lot of people say, we need the Lord. Then you're going to hear the other half of the Christians who say, we need a person, right? We need a, uh, this person, that person. So then what, what the Lord is doing in these end times, all this stuff must come. Because I found out something in life that people may not agree with, they may agree with. I found out that there's only one moment in time when you can actually know who people are you know when that is when it's right in the middle of a crisis right now you'll never know you'll never know who a person is during peacetime because every everybody at some level is an actor or an actress right you know when you're at those those uh uh people go up to each other and say hey how you doing you give them a hug and this and that's that's just common but it's it's not necessarily that we were thinking about that person no we can smile we can do all sorts of things but when everything goes wrong that's who we really are that's when, when you separate wrong, the men from the boys strained, that's right that's when we're going to separate the wheat from the tares that's right that's when it comes In a moment down. of crisis in a moment of crisis, that's Mike, when you find out who Mike, you are. Mike, 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 you said we would have water events. We're having them. You said we'd have weather. We're having it. You said we'd have war. You were definitely on board there. Because last Thursday, there was no attack on Israel yet. So in seven days, Israel's been attacked, and Israel has now attacked Iran. And the whole world, the United Nations, were about ready to split the land and, and and people are pointing fingers and biden's mad and everybody's upset tomorrow and and the stock market is tanking i mean the futures heidi walked in here and said everything's tanking because and and all prices are starting the futures are starting to soar within the hour what kind of a day we're going to have tomorrow mike what are we going to what are we going to do tomorrow well pastor I, I i'll say it again um i know we have middle east activity right yeah the USA is a target. Yeah. Germany is a target. The UK is a target. Italy is a target. All these places are target. We're going to be dealing with a whole slew of issues that seem highly irregular and anomalous. You know, if I were a person, especially pertaining to computers, I would certainly make sure everything is backed up uh, now. I would do that right away. It's a known fact that there's a huge compromise of data that happened in the last i'll say 100 hours um and it's unknown to what in that will mean cyber um uh the the all these cyber threats that have been coming in are being handled but they're starting to overwhelm the systems folks have been we've had failing systems we've had failing emergency systems we've had failing uh, um, um federal systems right the id system has been failing Police officers cannot run plates in certain states. I'm not going to tell you what states those, those are, but they can't run plates. They can't verify your identity. What? Um, th there are some things, and this is happening right now as we speak. Right now as we speak. There are phone companies who are, the, the, yesterday, it started yesterday, one phone company who, is, who has fiber optic lines all over the place had physical cuts in their fiber, right? <laughs> That, that again, it happened today with internal hardware failures. Now, people can call that people can call that coincidence all day. Something is happening within the United States of America that nobody is paying attention to. You're right. And don't look to the media to put the story out. No. They're still going to try and keep everybody calm, right? No, that's right. But but if people are aware of it, uh, hopefully they won't be shocked. when they when they find out that uh, you know we've been compromised. Well, we had a on, couple on a movies. Deep level. Barack Obama brought out Leave the World Behind, showed a boat out of control being hacked, running the ground. We had our problem over there in Baltimore. Since the eclipse, since the eclipse. We've been going downhill. <laughs> we haven't even got our 40 days in, and this thing is falling apart. We're going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. All right, I got one thing last thing to say, Mike, before you go. Why is Israel strike on Iran? Here's, here's CNN 10 minutes ago. Israel has carried out a strike against Iran. U.S. officials tell CNN in a move that threatens to trigger 
further deadly conflicts throughout the Middle East. The attack came hours after Iran's foreign minister, Hassan Abdelolahan, and I'm not going to say that twice, told CNN that if Israel takes any further military action against Iran, its response would be immediate and at a maximum level. Israel had for days been weighing its response to Iran's unprecedented weekend strikes on its soil, most of which were intercepted. But Iran launched the attack in retaliation for what? For the suspected Israeli strike on the embassy compound in Syria. That airstrike. Okay, so here we're, we're, we're trying to prove Israel, you caused it. Then Israel, you caused it. Did you hear what I'm saying, Mike? 11 minutes ago, CNN has just basically told us that this thing is going to threat further deadly conflicts throughout the Middle East. They just announced it. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. We just were told by the government to CNN, to me and you, and to us, it's coming. It's coming. That's why it was important for aircraft target packages to be exchanged, loaded, and, and verified uh, all day yesterday, it seemed, and, and prior to that. Right? So yeah. we are on a type of nuclear watch right now. Yes, 100%. So nothing happening right now should be it, it should be minimized. People should be aware of it. But I can tell you right now that uh, it is not a stretch of the imagination to say that uh, some nuclear usage is, 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 is on used. the table right now. It's on the table right now, right? It's on the table. So everybody has to be ready for that. And chemical warfare, likewise, it's everybody has to be ready for that. So militaries are, are about to go into, uh, they're, they're, they've kept it pretty quiet. But the chemical biological threat is more real than the nuclear threat. Yeah, right? yeah. Much more real. And don't forget, Russia might take advantage of this chaos. And don't forget China. They might decide it's a good time to take Taiwan. And, of course, our little buddy down in North Korea he loves to play with the green buttons. Who knows what he might do to South Korea, um, which is what we've been talking about on this show for the last 10 years at least with Mike around the world and others, that this is the moment. This is the moment we told everybody it was coming. Nobody believed us back then. You're a fear monger, Begley. You and Mike around the world are fear mongers. Here we are. And oh, by the way, some kind of binary system's pulling on the entire universe right now, causing the, probably the biggest threat of all. Mike, what are we going to talk about next week? Can you give can you give us a clue? What we will well, decide. I think you know what we're going to have. We're going to be talking. To, we're probably talking about some cyber issues. Okay. Some some cyber issues and uh, legal issues, jail issues, right? Um, huh? I would I wouldn't take shutdowns off the table. At some point, certain activities are going to have to be suspended within the USA. Certain activities may have to be suspended in the United States. Yeah. You think they might put Trump in uh, jail bef and put him in uh, jail for 30 days while the trial's going on uh, before they ever even convict him? I hope not, right? I really do hope not. You wouldn't not. rule it out, um, though, would you? No, I don't put anything past those people. I don't do that. Uh, if these if there are certain people here in the USA that are quite vicious. Yeah. If they want something, that they're running the show. You know they'll right, but they also, at the same time, they also provide entertainment for people. Right? Yeah. They do through through. So very real people are playing roles they have no idea of. They become the casualties of somebody else's evil uh, uh, entertainment, you know, production, and it seems like too many things are staged these days but um i wouldn't rule that out I i'm praying for trump most of them i'm praying for biden sure. too i'm praying for all those guys uh, all of them because we, all we don't out. need this we don't want this no we don't i just know i just know that nobody can attack when you think about prophecy yeah you know that jerusalem at some point is going to be taken yeah. The USA did not stop it. How can Israel be occupied for three and a half years and the USA didn't stop it, right? I know for a fact if it happened, even if the president would not send people, people would volunteer to go over there by their own wallet, right? Yeah. Just like they did the Ukraine. Yep. They went to the Ukraine and, and nobody sent them over there. They volunteered. So 
There's a what there's Americans there's Americans that I know of have already left for Israel. They've already joined the IDF. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they've already yeah. joined, and so yeah. and more are on the way because they know. As a mom, you know. Yeah. How, how important. But it is. my point is, my point is, what happens to us, the United States of America, that we did not stop somebody, right? The these elements in the Middle East from occupying Israel for three and a half years. How could we not intervene for three and a half years? Something happened to the USAN prophecy that we were not able to help Israel for three and a half years. That's what I'm saying. I know you're right, and I don't know what it is, but I know you're right. It's in the Bible. Mike, thank you for coming on tonight. I'll let you go. I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Uh Lord willing, if we're still on the air, if we're still able to do it, we'll be back here next Thursday night. Look forward to having you on. Thank you for coming on tonight. Fastball is always an honor. God bless you. The honor is mine, brother. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye. Israel has carried out strikes. This is what CNN said 17 minutes ago. Israel has carried out strikes inside Iran. A U.S. official tells CNN in a move that threatens to trigger Further deadly conflict throughout the Middle East. A move that threatens to trigger further deadly conflicts throughout the Middle East. That's what CNN is saying because that's what the White House told them to say. The attack came hours after Iran's, and I told you about the foreign minister. I watched him this morning. I watched him tonight. I told Heidi. I said, this guy's talking war, war, war. It's about to happen. Yeah, it happened in an hour. Israel had for days been weighing its response to Iran's unprecedented weekend strikes on its soil since Saturday night. Iran launched attacks in retaliation, they say, because Israel took took out that compound that was next to the Iranian embassy in, in Damascus and killed the top seven uh, military brass. That airstrike destroyed the consulate building, killed those seven officials, including their two top commanders. Now, nuclear facilities in if Assassin, they have been targeted. Uh, we'll want to see. Israel may have just tried to you know, threaten them with this. Who knows? But we've got a lot going on. And if you're watching now, and over 10,000 of you are with us live, and I know this, this broadcast will be seen 60, 70, 80,000, maybe more times the next seven days i'm going to ask you a question if you're watching are you saved i mean my lord have mercy are you saved jesus is coming back i do not know the day or the hour i've been praying that i'd be worthy to escape the hour of temptation that's coming on the world folks we're all we're so close to that hour I don't know the day or the hour the Lord returns. Nobody does, not even Jesus himself. But my Lord, have mercy. You can see the day is approaching. Will you tonight make a decision? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Tonight, would you be willing to turn your life to Jesus, to let him save you. During this song, type, I want to be saved. And let me pray with you when the song is over. Don't wait to wait and see how it's going to work out. Pretty soon, some city in America is going to be blown away. Everybody in that city. 200,000, 300,000, half a million. They're all waiting to see how it's going to work out. Don't let them be you. Brian Baker says, I want to be saved. Come on, this is your night. This is the night to get saved. Tonight's the night. I remember the night I first gave my life to Jesus. I was lost and all alone and so undone. Just type, I want to be saved, like Matthew Bigley just did. There were pieces of me here, pieces of me there. 
and I was so broken. Then I asked, then I asked Jesus, can, can you, you put, put me, me back, back together again? again? Jason you came to me and you saved me and turned my life around and I know where I bless you Scott I was then, Lord, and, and I know where I am now Christy God bless you we're gonna pray with you as well you know this walk in life, it's full of many decisions. And we live with each and every one we may. Now listen to Kevin Wilson right here when he sings this verse. But the best decision I ever made was when I asked the Lord. come and heal this broken man that I am and I know where I was then thank you Jesus I know where I am now he came to me and you saved me and turned my life around and I know where I am now and I know where I was then people are getting saved tonight I know where I am now they're coming you came to me and you saved me you turned Folks, there's a lot of folks that are typing and want to be saved. That was Kevin Wilson who wrote the song. Kevin Wilson wrote the song, singing with me on my album, Harmonize and Prophesy. And there are so many people that are typing, I want to be saved. Thank God. Thank God for every one of you. The Bible says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. And so the day that you give the Lord your whole heart, he said, I'll be found with you. For if you come to the Lord with a, uh, a, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he is never going to turn you away. And so the Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish. Daryl wants to be saved. William Hickman wants to be saved. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. This is your moment. This is your moment, and many of you are making this decision tonight. Church, would you please pray with me as I pray for them? This is huge, what's going on right now. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your power of salvation through Jesus Christ, who breaks every chain. Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I am. I don't need to pretend that I'm not. I'm just going to be brutally honest, God. You know my heart. I got sin in my life. I'm repenting of that. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved tonight. I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of being in this world sometimes. 
I just want to get things right with you because I know you're coming soon. So I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he's the son of God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe he ascended into heaven. And I believe he's coming back again soon and very soon, and I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith, in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, precious name. Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome, folks, and I mean this, welcome to the family. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, man, I tell you, something good has just happened. Something wonderful has just happened because you gave your life to Jesus Christ. It is incredible. It is incredible what God has done. It don't get no better than that. Somebody shout. It just don't get no better than that. No, no, no. We didn't need padded pews or stained glass windows for the Holy Ghost to move. A mighty wind on us, an upright piano, and Charlie Brown's old guitar. Well, can happen again so tonight let's have a revival right where we are yeah it just don't get no better than that We all sang those roof-raising gospel songs. Just like Kenny Henson singing, hallelujah ringing, and the Holy Ghost, yeah, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I feel good in the Lord, no matter what's going on around the world. I'm not troubled by it. The Bible says there will be wars and rumors. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Somebody shout, shout, shout. Cause it's a bona fide fact No better, no, no better No better, no, no better No better, no, no better It's 
just don't get no better than that. Somebody shout! Are you serious? I'm so serious. Guys, welcome to the uh, coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bailey. We started this broadcast 15 minutes early because we knew that we were going to have a lot to cover. But what we didn't know was that Iran was going to get hit by Israel tonight. Not only that, Israel was going to hit Iran, hit Iraq, hit Syria. And Lord knows where this thing goes from here. And uh, so hang on. You're going to hear a lot of trash talking about Israel. Anti-Semitism is going to be off the charts. Benjamin Netanyahu is going to be crucified in the media along with Donald Trump. It is going to get ugly. And this is exactly what the Bible said would happen just before the coming of Jesus Christ. I hope you're ready. I really did. I really do. God bless all of you. We love you. Uh, We're praying for you. When you send your uh, Passover offerings in, you can call it in tomorrow, send it in, go to our website and just send it in there. Put your prayer request with it when you send it. You can text give it. You can go to Breeze and give it. You can send a check or money order in the mail with the, with your prayer request with it. Get ready. Don't miss this one. This is probably the third most important Passover in the history of humanity. The first Passover was when God passed over the land of Egypt and the children of Israel uh, headed out of Egypt toward the promised land. The second most important Passover ever was the day that Christ was crucified on the cross. He was and is the Passover lamb. And the third most important Passover ever could be this Monday if the red heifer is sacrificed and the ashes are burned. I don't know if they'll do it or not, but if they do, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We're in the stretch run. Imagine that if they do that as they're fighting with Iran and everybody else, if they just still go ahead and do this. Can you imagine the response of the world? Unbelievable. I don't know what will happen. They might not. Then again, they might. I just don't know. I just know Jesus is sitting on the throne. So when you send that Passover offering in, Know that God's going to bless you with seven blessings. I've taught on it. Can I pray right now? Father, in the name of Jesus. There's been a lot of Passover offerings, Lord, already come in. I'd like to bless those tonight. And I'm going to bless again on Sunday night, Lord, and again on Monday and and all through the next week during the Passover. But folks have responded. They've been, they've, they've literally got lost ones, loved ones that need to be saved. They got homes that need to sell property. They got insurance settlements that need to be broke loose. Lord, they need to be prosperous. They need to be blessed with this. Some of them have been waiting for three, four, five years on their Social Security to be uh, approved and the back pay to go with it. This needs to happen, Lord. Break it loose in Jesus' name. There's in, there's in, there's uh, retirement, retirement funds that need to be released. There's inheritances that have been tied up way too long. God... We need this all released for the children of God, for the body of Christ. And, Lord, also, there's businesses, God, that you want to bless. And, Lord, there are people that are giving their Passover offering. And those that have done, God, those that have really been blessed with more are giving more, like you said to do. Those that have had less are giving less. Those that are somewhere in the middle are giving what you're telling them to do. People are being obedient, God, and they're also bringing before you their heart and soul for their loved ones and their friends and their families. Some need sickness. You said one of the seven blessings was you would take the sickness away. Thank you, Jesus, for that promise because you are the Passover lamb. And so we trust you. We believe in you. We put our faith in you, Lord, and in your word. And we expect the miracles to break loose, and we can't wait to hear the results from the people. When it does, as it always does every year. That's why we're faithful to you, because you're always faithful to us. And we ask it now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. If you got saved tonight, I want you to get baptized. To find a pastor, find a church somewhere, get baptized. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you need a Bible, I'll send it to you for free. I'll even send a little book with it. It says, God loves you, that Happy Caldwell wrote. I buy them from him, and I give them to you. I want you to have, if somebody's sick, I'll send you a prayer cloth. Been anointed with oil and prayed over and believe for your healing. If somebody's very, very ill, we'll send a blanket to them. It's free. It's free. It's free. Everything I just said is free. We'll pray over the blanket. We'll anoint it with oil. We'll, we'll ship it to them here in the United States. And believe God for a supernatural miracle. We can do these things. We can do these things in this amazing online church because of our faithful partners, their faithful tithers, their supporters. They make special donations. They give special offerings like on Passover. They do the things they got to do. They do the things that you required us all to do. And thank you, Jesus, for always being there for us. And thank God we thank you for these wonderful people that are part of this amazing online church. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. And the people said, amen and amen. All right, guys. I'm going to let you go. It's been a long night. We've went for three hours. And uh, we'll be back, Lord willing, tomorrow. Tomorrow may be a, a different day than we've ever seen. But Jesus will still be on the throne. Don't worry. Are you serious? It's going to be all right. For those of you who got saved, your name just got written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're a new creature. You're, you're, you're saved. You're forgiven. And you're born again. God bless you. In Jesus' name. God bless.